And good morning, everyone. Hello and welcome in to the 2023 Let's Go Tournament second weekend, eighth eighth race of the first round. I'm T Pat and I'm joined by Trevaria on commentary. And we've got an exciting weekend of races. And this is uh race two of four through this weekend. So it should be uh, an awesome one out there. But yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching from from across the world. And uh, Triv, hey, good morning to you. How are you doing? Hi, uh, I'm doing well. It's 6 p.m. over here, so not quite morning <laughs> anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got, excited we got to some be cover, here. don't you? Don't we? <laughs> yeah, that's some coverage there. True. Yeah, morning still for me, so just finished my coffee here. Uh, but yeah, we've got a pretty good race here. This is uh, expected to be a pretty good one uh, between King Trubs and Drywall. Both will be running the EV version for today. Uh, only have two on the screen. Bounce, uh, Bouncy did a scratch from today's race, but we still have two very good competitors. Uh, King Trubs, also known as Matt or Unovan Matt, uh, if you might have remembered him from his old screen name. Uh, very good Let's Go Runner. Um, one of our Pot 1 runners with a best time of a 3.08. Drywall, one of our new runners out of Pot 3. Uh, with no time going into the tournament, but has been practicing a lot. So I still think we're going to be in for a pretty nice race today. Absolutely. Very excited to see what uh, these two runners are going to show us here today. Yeah, I'm actually excited because I've known Matt for a while, and Matt has actually been doing a lot of our practice races, um, just kind of getting very familiar with uh, racing against a lot of top runners, um, I believe he and I have been uh, in like five races together, um, and he's always very solid. He's very close to his best time or thereabouts kind of every time. So even though he's kind of on the bottom end of pot one, in fact, at 13th uh, for his seed time, that is like the lowest spot. So he was the last into pot one kind of was like surprised he made that. Uh, but uh, he's been practicing a lot. So I'm actually really excited to see. Uh, how far up? I mean, he might be able to uh, to climb the pot rank even into round two should he win today. But yeah, our racers are now readying up. Uh, we're about 20 seconds away from the start of the race. Uh, of course, if you are um, if this is your first time watching, if this is your eighth time watching, we'll explain it again. Uh, our competitors get about a one minute countdown to set the time to try to get that double moonstone possibility. Gives them a very comfortable entrance into uh, the race here, so we should be able to see them underway in just a couple seconds. Actually, I wonder uh, if both runners set their clocks to set up for the double moonstone later. It looks like we are off with the race. Yeah. Yeah, just, just kind of gauging by how they entered the game. Um, basically, you're either just sitting on the begin game screen because it's like, eh, you know, don't want to worry about it, just want to be right there. Um, but a minute is usually more than enough time to be able to uh, hit OK on the clock uh, and then enter into the game. It takes about 40 seconds, maybe 45 if it's, quote, slow, you know, getting the controllers to uh, connect. Um, but yeah, should be a great race. Drywall just going for the quick uh, boy one approach. Meanwhile, Trubs goes over to girl one. I, I always like to see a girl one, so I'm happy about that. I usually try to go for the girl one, but I've just been like kind of mashing a lot recently, so it's like, oh, boy one again. You, you know it's a power play when you go girl three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me one of my we should make our backup saves to be girl three, because um, yeah. we don't lose any technically don't lose any time to it. I plan on on just rotating the character for my uh, backup saves if I have to use more than one throughout the tournaments, which I yeah. hope there, six be... six rounds you could do a different one for each round, right? <laughs> yeah, that was the plan. I mean, I, luckily I didn't have to use my backup for round one, so. I can reuse that next round if I have to. Yeah, uh, same here, Triv. Yeah, so when we mentioned the uh, the backup saves, um, what we have is uh, after the runners see the nature of their Eevee or Pika, if they were running Pika, um, they can choose to uh, basically quit and load a backup save. That is also immediately after picking the Eevee as their starter Pokemon. 
It takes about 35, 40 seconds or so to load that save, so there is a bit of a time penalty. Um, but you might see some runners do it if they get in a poor nature, not even just unrunnable, because when we talk about unrunnable nature, as we, we talk in like a PB attempt um, aspect there, where it's like, oh, if I have minus attack, minus special attack, or in the case for Eevee, also minus speed, you would usually just reset those natures in a PB attempt. Uh, I think most runners will probably not take just minus attack, but might just deal with minus special attack or minus speed. Uh, I know that's how I'm approaching uh, the races yeah. here. Uh, minus attack is quite bad uh, for both Pikachu and Eevee, in fact. Yeah. So it kind of comes out even. I actually don't know how bad it is for, for Eevee, but due to so many turns, you have to go through so many extra turns in Pika version that it's definitely worth it in my eyes to uh, go for the backup where you have a neutral nature, you don't run into those problems. Ideally, um, but I imagine it's just as bad for Eevee. Yeah, it is. It is very bad for Eevee. Uh, I was actually talking with uh, Shenanigans uh, yesterday about this, and his idea was like, "Oh, but like you could just catch a Chansey, and once you have high EXP, it does kind of neutralize that." And while that idea is correct, uh, you just lose so many turns to being minus attack before you even yeah. have the possibility of catching a Moon Chansey. Like, you're, you're gonna lose probably a turn on Rival, it's a range on that first trainer, the Radita trainer, uh, mm -hmm. and then Brock, you're losing two, if not three turns, and then the Bell Sprout. And by that time, you've already lost like four to five turns to minus attack before you even have an, an opportunity to even get to that, uh, that Chansey catch that would neutralize a minus nature. But that's why the other natures are okay. If you have a high EXP run, minus special attack now just feels like normal special Yeah, sadly you can't really guarantee that you can catch the Chansey in Moon. It definitely would help with minus attack. Uh, it helped me, uh, actually no, I didn't get the Chansey, but a very high experience catch helped me with my minus special attack Pikachu uh, in my tournament race. So it's definitely helpful, but you know, you can't always guarantee it. Yeah, it's been about 50% this tournament, which I thought was kind of funny. We're going to see right. the natures from both of them here. Uh, we've got lax nature and relaxed nature. Uh, so we have plus defense on both screens. Drywall does opt to go for the backup save because that was a minus speed natured Eevee. So I'm not fully surprised um, that he would go for the backup nature there. It is technically unrunnable. Um, but as we said, it's kind of a it's kind of up to the runners if they want to just deal with minus speed, or if they don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Trubs, the lax nature actually isn't too bad. Uh, plus defense minus special defense for Eevee is actually just fine. It's actually better than the other way around, which would be a gentle natured, which is minus defense plus special defense. The defensive stat, if you're in the minus category there, if you're a minus nature actually can be quite scary around the hideout section the yeah. uh Je jesse's arbot does a lot of damage with poison jab and then also giovanni's the, persian yeah. uh is also quite uh can be quite damaging so having plus defense actually isn't the worst thing in the world that was definitely a, a perfectly fine nature for a race yeah uh, for, of course nature is being the uh the characteristic that adds 10% to one stat decreases 10% in another stat, um, with HP being the exception in all those cases. Uh, Eevee, I, I've been trying to make an argument recently that Naughty might be the best nature, uh, but Rash is up there as well, just as long as you have a plus in the one of the attacking stats. Oh, Drywall hitting a right on right one. Yeah, <laughs> I've been there, done that. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, what would you say is what would you say the best nature for Pika is? Um, it's definitely uh, one of the plus attack natures. Uh, Pikachu doesn't really benefit from from plus special attack quite as much as Eevee because while we do use uh, Thunderbolt quite a lot, um, most of them are guaranteed. Even uh, or most of the Okos with Thunderbolt are guaranteed even at minus special attack. The only fight where Minus special attack is bad as JNJ and Tower, so JNJ 3. But plus special attack doesn't really get you anything at, outside of maybe a small chance that you can actually Oko the Weezing with uh, Helping Hand Thunderbolt. 
So I would say naughty. Probably. The best yeah, match that's of naughty. Uh, poppycock. It's, it's starting to get pretty common, especially our chatters. They're like, may all of your runners be blessed with a naughty nature. <laughs> yeah. It's just really good. Uh, almost a clean fight on uh, uh, Trub's end. Uh, looks like he got Growl spam just one too many times and ended up with a four turn there. Uh, typically, Eevee can beat the rival in, on average, three turns, but of course it's... Uh, it's kind of dependent if the opponent Pikachu decides it wants to growl a lot or not. Uh, also, it can be very trolly because a Thundershock Paralyze uh, can really slow you down. Sometimes it's like, yeah. okay, I hit through every time and it makes no difference, but uh, it can feel real bad if you get paralyzed turn one. Especially because of the status lag, because, you know, that's the thing in this game. Uh, for whatever reason, if one of the Pokémon in battle has a status condition, there can be some lag uh, at the beginning of a turn, and that lag can last from anywhere between a fraction of a second to, like, three seconds per turn, just uh, from lag. So, yeah, you really don't know... on there. Yeah, you really don't want the statuses to happen. Um, there are some situations where especially Eevee relies on the status, but uh, ideally you just you just get the Oko without any statuses occurring. Yeah, the the idea is, if, if, for example, the uh, Raticates that we'll see around Route 9, Route 10 uh, can be pretty quick and do a lot of damage. So the idea is to get a Buzzy Buzz off to automatically paralyze it to drop its speed. And yeah. once you got that, you just say, okay, this was a bit necessary um, to get that paralysis off. But there are other situations where you will try to avoid it if you can. Um, there will be an example, the first trainer in uh, Rock Tunnel, for example, has the Slowpoke. And mm -hmm. if you don't need to hit it with that electric type move, which is uh, very unfavorable to one shot, you might even see runners go for headbutt first and then Buzzy Buzz to kill just to avoid that status lag. Yeah, I remember I always did this when I was running EV. Just go for the headbutt first on Slowpoke. So on map screen, we're seeing Route 2 lower uh, Caterpie catch. Uh, yes. This might be one of the first times we've seen this in the tournament where I the idea is... Well. Yeah, the, the idea is you usually want to catch Pokemon while they're lured because they come at a very high level. But this is the one exception where a Caterpie or Weedle on this part of the route uh, gets a catch bonus because the game has a mechanic called a newbie bonus. And at any point before you enter Viridian Forest, the game gives you a 50% increase to every catch rate in the game. Effectively, those Pokeballs are acting like Great Balls, which means catching this Caterpie at level three with a YOLO throw, even if you don't even hit the circle, is upwards of 90% to catch, which is extremely favorable uh, and way more favorable than the catches uh, once you are in the forest. Level seven yeah. Caterpie or Weedle with a one, like just a regular Pokeball, excellent throw is I believe like 73, 75%. And even if you hit, a, hit it with a Raspberry, it only goes up to about 85%. So that Caterpie catch can be very safe, though you do have to give it a couple extra levels. Uh, yeah. And you're also not getting all that much experience. It was worth, I think, 13 experiences we saw. Yeah, uh, that was partially because um, Traps didn't get it first ball, because catching something in this game with the first throw actually gives you an experience modifier. So uh, since he missed the first throw, um, it was even less experience than it would have been, but it is almost usually like 20 XP that you get from that early uh, back catch. I still love it, mostly because I get, I tend to get super unlucky with uh, Viridian Forest once he back catch. Uh, so every time I see a bug outside of the forest, I will go for it. Though I've also gotten a breakout on one of those catches before. So. <laughs> The idea, I guess the question is to bury or not to bury the, bu yeah. the first yeah. bug in forest. And I keep going back and forth. I'm like, ah, oh, bury is slow. I'm just going to throw. And mm. then you start getting a ton of breakouts and you're like, oh, I'm going to start burying again. And then you start burying the Pokemon and then you get that like one or two breakouts. And it's like, why am I even doing this in the first place? Yeah, I mean, I had this happen once uh, very much. During one run, I had the same um, thought process. I was gonna go, no berry. I, I threw the ball, it broke out. Then I was going, you know, okay, fine, I, I do need to berry. Um, I used the berry and it broke out again. 
so that was kind of unfortunate. Uh, yeah, in, in my first round race, it was I buried the Weedle and it broke out. I um, buried it again I bro and it broke out. Oh no. So I didn't bury it and then it got in. And sure. <laughs> that's when it's just like, oh, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, so here we're in Viridian yeah. Forest, we're going to see, yeah, great. Uh, one of the big bonus spawns that obviously the Eevee version can get is Pikachu in Viridian Forest. Uh, Pikachu is kind of notorious for being very jumpy. Uh, in fact, it works out just perfectly that if you go for an excellent throw, uh, the Pikachu will jump at the perfect time to do this like forward flip over that ball. It's actually very, oh, no. it's a very cute animation, but it's a little bit annoying from the yeah. speedrunning perspective. Uh, Drywall also getting the Pikachu. This is nice. his first catch though, so he does have to save yeah. the controller. Break out. It broke out. Unfortunate. I usually would like to see a uh, bug first to get that two controller yeah. catch. Okay. Also for experience. Uh, because Pikachu does learn double kick at, or try to learn double kick at level 9, so ideally you don't want that uh, Pikachu to hit level 9. Woo! Nice dodge from Matt. Uh, that Beedrill just spawned right in the middle of like six Pokemon on his way to this Weedle. It's also like a 1% chance to spawn, so uh, yeah. nice. But yeah, both runners have used Allure here. Uh, the lore in this game has two uses, really. The first one is that uh, the spawn rate for our Pokemon uh, in the area is increased, which of course is very good if you are trying to catch a lot of Pokemon. And then the second uh, use is that each Pokemon that spawns will spawn at the maximum level it can, plus one. So in Forest, Pokemon can spawn uh, all the way up to level six. But with the lore, uh, they are all gonna spawn at level seven. So that's really nice for us because we get more experience for higher level catches. And also the Pokemon we do catch will take fewer level ups to reach the evolutions. The experience is so important in this part of the game. Um, Cause as you mentioned, Pikachu level uh, learns double kick at level nine. Well, Eevee doesn't learn double kick until level 10. Uh, and that is going to be absolutely required for the run because that is how Eevee is going to handle Brock's rock type Pokemon. Um, so it is just extremely important that these runners get excellent throws in the forest. They go for as many glowing catches as well to get that extra multiplier to their EXP. Uh, and if they're not level 10 yet, they'll probably have to catch something extra on the upcoming route, Route 2. And that'll usually be a Rattata or a Pidgey. Uh, Trubs is already at level 11 off of that Bell Sprout catch. That's perfect. So he is in, yeah, he's in really good shape there. Going to get uh, another evolution. We'll see if Drywall is able. Now, this is the one thing I've noticed with Drywall. He's been getting a lot of great catches, but not excellent. So you're probably going to see that experience disparity uh, between the level 11 EV on Matt's screen and as we're going to see in a second here. Uh, just got level 10 on that. Uh, so Drywall is in good shape. I, yeah. I assume the uh, the Pikachu probably helped out, which is another huge thing, as that Pikachu is worth a decent amount of EXP in Forest. It's just a very, very nice catch. Uh, yeah, Eevee actually hit level 11. It's kind of hard oh, nice. to tell on my screen. but uh... Yeah, it got a little bit pixelated on our yeah. end, uh, but it, I, I know it looks a bit more clear on the stream end, thankfully. Yeah, but level 11 is a very comfortable level to be at for this part of the game. Again, you do have to be level 10 to get the double kick for Eevee and to actually get a good Brock fight. Yeah, um, and, and the thing is, is that we have to use the Eevee for Brock and not Bellsprout because it's Bellsprout versus Oddish in the version exclusives. And Oddish is much, much better at beating Brock quite simply yeah. because Oddish uses Absorb, the special attacking move. Bellsprout does not have that luxury. Bellsprout's attacking move is a Vine Whip, which is physical attack. And yeah. Onyx has kind of a ton of defense and literally no special defense. So it makes just a, a world of difference. Yeah, so Trubs is out of the forest. Uh, did not opt for any more Route 2 upper catches. Uh, I believe I did see a glowing Pidgey, which is kind of situational. Um, my I, my thought process with like glowing Pidgey is that 
if you can get Butterfree and Beedrill evolved off of it, uh, it might be worth it because then you can deposit it, but deposit those Pokemon in the very next menu. But he might not be close enough to make that work. Um, but Glowing Rat is usually a little bit better because Raticate is actually such a such an acceptable catch from Route 10 onward. It's worth a good amount of EXP. It's it's in the same catch rate tier as Graveler is. Um, so it's just like, yeah, you can Raspberry it, Double Great Ball, and just collect your experience. So, so yeah. early Rat is turning into one of the, like, like a very comfortable early game idea for a lot of trainers. The experience is king when it comes to the Eevee version. It absolutely is. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Route 2 Rats uh, for quite some time. I used to um, always do this for PvP attempts because I just think it's so nice to have that extra experience. You um, don't struggle to get to level 15 as much, which is going to be another one of those experience thresholds that the runners will have to meet here after Brock. Uh, plus, like you said, it's pretty convenient to just go for the Radicate later and get another nice high experience catch. So what we'll see in the Brock fight is uh, Geodude Onyx, you know, very classic. This game is the yellow remake. Uh, a successor. Uh, for Eevee, it's going to be a two-shot for both the Dude and Onyx. However, you need to use a Tail Whip on the Onyx. Uh, ends up being just a little bit faster to go Tail Whip, Double Kick, Double Kick, instead of just Double Kicking three times because the animation is actually quite slow. Uh, it's not like Scarlet Violet animations where they fully play out, um, but just using that status move, you just get a couple things of text uh, instead of watching the HP bar have to slide down. Twice. Uh, this is actually a quite good time for Matt. Seven Pokemon at the 18 minute mark. Um, yeah. I'm sure he's very, very pleased. Uh, that is a very quick PV time. Um, that like that's up there with any reasonable PV attempt. Uh, and Drywall's not too far behind. Drywall's already on the Onyx. Uh, it works out. It works out almost just perfectly that uh, with the uh, with the minus defense of the tailor, that double kick just does each kick does exactly a quarter damage unless you get a high roll. Um, there are some there are some very very unique situations where if you get like up to thirty two attack stat or if you just get to the level thirteen, that next like uh, increased damage range. Uh, you can actually skip that tail, but it's pretty rare. Usually you need a lot of, like, not just glowing catches, but, like, a massive catch. For example, if your Bellsprout ends up being that uh, massive Bellsprout, uh, you'll end up getting, like, 600 EXP from it, uh, and all of a sudden you're just in great shape uh, through the early game. Yeah, Trap's just going for the first show of the game here, uh, buying some more great balls, a couple of status heal items, because you can get status in this game. It does happen quite a lot, actually. Uh, and also buying an X attack and X special attack to boost the stats of um, the Pokemon in battle. Yeah, X items, a classic of any Pokemon game. Absolutely. Uh, they, they increase your uh, attacking stage. Uh, thankfully, from Gen 7 and onward, they increase by two stages which is effectively doubling the stat total. So uh, each so attack would do double damage, um, effectively. The, the math has a certain way of handling that, but there's no need to go <laughs> that deep down the rabbit hole. But yeah, effectively just doubling your stats with each X item usage and, uh, up to a plus six uh, or a uh, plus 300% increase. Uh, there's only one fight in the game where you do have to go to plus six, and it's way, way down onto the Lance fight. That's some time uh, I believe for the uh, the Pikachu version, you usually have to go to plus six for champ as well. Unless you want to go for Hydro Pump, but uh, yeah. <laughs> well, unless your name's unless your name's Joker sleeps. Who's who's right now? I so I've been keeping stats of the tournament. And Joker has used Hydro Pump the most of anyone. Really? He used it seven times in his run. Wow, okay. <laughs> well, I really? guess uh, if Randall was in the tournament, then uh, <laughs> that would look different. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, uh, Randall's like, I will not be outdone in this metric. 
<laughs> uh, Traps just got uh, one of the quickest catches or dex registers in the run with the magic card you can buy for 500 pocket dollars. Uh, just very quick and easy, you just go into the Pokemon Center and buy it. There's no experience gained or anything. So it's very quick um, and you want to go for that basically every time. Also on Drywall's screen right now, the Ekans, which is a very nice optional catch for the Eevee version that you can only get on Route 3 and Route 4. So very nice that Drywall got that right off the bat. So I've heard this about the differences of the Eevee and the Pikachu version, and it's not just the fights, but it's also like the catch routing. And um, and Echi, the world record holder for both games, says that the catch route is actually better on the Pikachu side. Oh yeah. And it's it's something that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. But do you want to explain how uh, the catch routing, especially like the bonus catches, seem like they're just more favorable on that side? Well. I kind of, it's kind of hard to, to explain it um, in its entirety, but uh, when we look at the early parts of the run, both games actually have um, two version exclusive optional catches right between the beginning of the game and Mount Moon. So uh, Pikachu version has the Sandshrew and the Mankey, both uh, decently common on Route 3 and Route 4. So um, you can catch both of them to help you get to A, get help you get to level 15 and B, um, get the bugs evolved in time. Because ideally you want both of the, of the bugs, Caterpie and Weedle, to be fully evolved before you go uh, into the Mount Moon catching section. Um, and since everything on Route 3 and Route 4 is going to be higher leveled, usually you can spawn at lower levels than uh, what you can catch in like Viridian Forest with the Pikachu in, in um, Eevee version. It's going to be a little easier to get to that level 15 threshold. Uh, that's just my opinion though for the first part of the run. Uh, I think a lot um, about the catch route is more interesting in the later parts of the, of the run, but we will get there when we get there, I think. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Because, um, yeah, I put, I put in a lot of work to try to make Butterfree and Regal evolve in that first menu, which the first menu yeah. is right before that first trainer, um, because that's when you teach Headbutt to Eevee. Uh, meanwhile, on Pikachu, you actually leave it for one more fight, or almost two more fights. Two more fights, still yeah. Use Oddish for both yeah, that's the Earl Sprout trainer and then the Sandshrew trainer. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so... Uh... Just doing the menu a tad bit later can sometimes make the difference and get those bugs of often time. Uh, yeah, because if not, you just kind of just kind of have to keep them around. I usually find that uh, they'll they'll get to level eleven or twelve or almost both twelve. Yeah. At which point you're just like, okay, I've lost, you know, I've gained four junk levels, which is eight yeah. seconds of extra overhead, and that alone is just like minimizing that can really add up fast because. Uh, as you know, like level ups just are one at a time. Did it think? Did it think? And it definitely even if they're spread out over multiple catches, it's like uh, I don't want to deposit yet. Yeah. Um, because depositing does take about like eight seconds if you do it for one Pokemon alone. So, so maximizing that efficiency pays off big time. Yeah, especially um, the lower and lower your PB gets, these small things. Do add up and you really want to pay attention and, and try to optimize those uh, catches in those levels what um, really helped me uh optimize that skill was actually running aop because oh, you're, yeah. you're trying you're trying to manage so many pokemon evolving and what you don't want to do for that category is the moment something evolves you don't you don't just go into your bag and swap it out for the next thing it's like, okay, I want to make sure I'm always doing two or three deposits simultaneously. And what I found out is that, like, I do what's called pairing, which is I pair two Pokemon together and say, hey, you guys are basically going to evolve at the same time. So if I'm going to make a deposit, it's you two that are going to be going in together. It's very obvious to look at Butterfree and Beedrill and say, this is a pair. Um, yeah, yeah. And then in AOP, it's like Diglett and Drowsy are a pair. 
uh, and then often um, Ekans and Paris can be that pairing. And I got so good that I started pairing things like Goldeen and Bulbasaur. Would, oh, really? And it's weirdly enough, like you catch the Goldeen and you grab the free Bulbasaur, and they would almost evolve fully at the exact same time. It just huh. like worked out or within like one level. Um, so that that kind of mentality for me, I put back into the any percent portion, and you're still just trying to optimize those menus. Like if you can That's only deposit once when you're in Mount Moon, like you are golden uh, after that first menu, of course. Yeah, uh, for yeah. for a sequence like Route 10 and Rock Tunnel, I like to do it twice. But if you can somehow do it one time, like you've just outright saved eight seconds of a deposit menu because you were like hyper optimal. Um, by the way, just getting back yeah. to the action, I saw both <laughs> runners do this. Um, they both were so this basement room that we see drywall in right now. Uh, you will often see a lot of especially beginner players. And we tell this to beginner players all the time. Reset the room. Uh, if you're getting a bunch of junk spawns like Geodudes and Zubats, and it's like, I don't need this, you can leave the room and go right back in. It clears those spawns. Uh, it's a nice small room so you can see all the spawns at the same time. I saw both players do just that to try to get all their spawns. Yeah. Uh, Drywall did just get the um, the Clefairy. Uh, yeah. is mid-level 14, which is, which is great experience. You're going to hit level 15 by the end of Mount Moon. Yeah. Chaps, on the other hand, uh, seems to be struggling a little bit. Didn't get a Clefairy, uh, I think, from what and, I saw. It's still level not, 13. And did not get excellent throws on either yeah. the Geodude or the Paris. So, yeah, Trubs is, is a little thin on experience. Um, this is really to hoping... the point, if he's only level 13 right now, yeah. he's almost certainly going to have to do all of... Uh, all of Nugget Bridge before Misty. Because sometimes if you're just shy, you can go fight Rival and then fight Misty and then take care of the rest of Bridge. Yeah. But doesn't look like that will be the case unless we see something like a last minute Andor Chansey or something spawn Which here. Which is still worth quite a lot of EXP. It is quite a lot of experience, <laughs> yes. Uh, Traps yeah, did get the Double Moonstone though. Sorry that I <laughs> interrupted oh, there. Yeah. No. Uh, just wanted to explain that really quickly because I alluded to it uh, at the beginning of the race. Uh, the hidden items in this game have a 50% chance of respawning uh, every day. So what the runners will typically do is they will set the clock to right around 11.30, pm so that they can have enough time to get into this room, pick up the moonstone and then have it respawn because the date will roll over. Uh, it's still only a 50% chance to respawn, but Traps actually got it, so he will have, or they will have one extra uh, Moonstone to use later on one of the many uh, Pokemon that evolves via uh, via Moonstone. Unless you're like me and you get double Moonstone and you have nothing else to evolve. Yeah, that's always a little sad. It happened. It happened to me yesterday again. Um, I did. <laughs> actually was going to use it on my Jigglypuff, but it didn't go into my party straight away. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. Uh, I was in this weird situation where I was actually going to, you know how uh, uh, sometimes Ninetales is evolved, but it's kind of yeah. it's kind of a funky menu because you don't get the Firestone until way, way later. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a situation where I was like, oh, I could double uh, Stone Evo in that menu, I could get both Jigglypuff and Vulpix at the same time, and it kind of minimizes the the damage of doing that awkward menu. Um, yeah. But I ended up just getting an extra catch, and it's like, okay, well, I don't have to do either of these now. <laughs> so I had an extra Moonstone in my in my inventory through the whole run. Yeah, I mean that stuff like that does happen sometimes, but uh, ideally you just wanna be able to like catch Jigglypuff and immediately evolve it before you deposit, just to get that out of the way. Um, the Jigglypuff being the fastest of the Moonstone evolutions because yeah. it doesn't learn a move on evolution, unlike the other three. Uh, we got the first of the Jesse and James fights on yeah. Trump's screen. Uh, for the Eevee version, you love to be level 15 for this fight because you can target the uh, coughing first which is the more difficult Mon to kill. Um, the Coughing, I believe, can poison you, so it's like preferred to get it off the screen. Mm. But if you're not level 15, or if you have a particularly bad range anyways, you want to get rid of the Ekans first, because then it's just a little bit faster. 
Uh, yeah, we're in this gonna... case, obviously did not get the uh, KO there. Uh, yeah, because... But you can use that third turn to heal a little bit. Yeah. Level 13 on the spider is going to be basically impossible to occur the coughing unless you have like plus attack and a very high AVs in attack as well. Yeah, Matt's experience is actually quite poor. He just barely yeah. hit 14 exiting really rough. here. Uh, and is behind on catches too, only 12 catches. And if I'm looking closely, I believe our timer that we have on screen is about a minute behind. Yeah, um, okay. So that was about a 32-30 exit, which on speed is not that bad, but obviously his experience and his catches are way behind. Um, he did get the Pikachu uh, in force, but he did not get the... Oh, <laughs> not only ah, did he not going get for the Ekans, red candy. This, okay, this is a great idea. There's a rare candy behind this house. It's there in the Gen 1 games as well. Um, this is a really, really smart play. It is a bit of... A little bit of investment to do it, but again, yeah. level 15 is going to allow him to fight Misty immediately. Um, he's got a some... menu anyways. Yeah, I've seen some discourse around this uh, candy. There are definitely some runners who are saying that just doing Witch first probably not actually slower than picking up this candy because it's four loading zones, right? To get to the candy and One, back. Two, three, yeah, Plus that's using. True. Yeah, using the candy on, on Eevee will mean that it will reach its friendship thresholds a little sooner. So you might get some extra turnarounds uh, in Hideout. That, you know, that's true. Um, I think the counter argument is that when you go through the bridge sequence at level 14. It is um, kind of a pain. It is a little bit of a pain. You are almost certainly not going to KO the... Uh, rivals Pikachu in one turn. Um, that's so you're going to lose a turn there. Uh, you are likely going to lose a turn to the rocket at the end because the again, there's another coughing there and there's just, at that level, there's no way you're going to have enough special attack unless you're plus special attack uh, to be able to KO. Which also so bears the risk that it could poison you. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's there's a validity to just take the consistent time loss of the rare candy uh, versus what could be um, not just the unoptimal movement. I believe it loses about 40 seconds either way, but you could still yeah. lose another two turns. Yeah, that's definitely a case to be made for this rare candy. Definitely interesting to see uh, Traps go for it here. Uh, is now exactly level 15 for this gym, which is the requirement you have to meet uh, in order to enter. So, um, I actually didn't check the special attack on the level up. I only looked at the attack. Uh, so I don't know if this one shot on the gold is guaranteed with Buzzy Buzz. Probably going to be a little rough at level 15. It's, it's, it's definitely not guaranteed. Yeah. Um, you, you need pretty decent special attack and being just 15. And we know the nature is lax, so I I would put some money down that that probably doesn't kill. And now I'm just <laughs> immediately proven wrong, uh, as it does go down in one shot. That's definitely uh, so good. That bodes though. well. No. Yeah, because now now uh, Traps doesn't have to heal for this fight. Uh, if the Goldine had gotten off like a quick attack or something, Traps may have needed to heal in order to not get killed by the combination of uh, the water gun out of the Psyduck and the Scald out of the Starmie here on Misty. Per particularly because he is minus special defense. Yeah. And it, this is the only fight where being minus special defense really does hurt Eevee. Mm -hmm. And it's because you just take so much more damage uh, yeah. from everything that Misty has. Uh, you do set up that one X special attack. Hopefully the Psyduck water guns and doesn't confuse. It does the same amount of damage. Yeah. Uh, but the Starmie is definitely the problem. You are going to see Scald, which okay. thankfully does not A, crit, or B, burn. Probably would have lived a burn tick yeah, on that. So. Um, but, he, but yeah, yeah, crit is definitely what you want to dodge in that situation. Yeah. Um, Trumps will have to heal here now. Uh, the HP threshold in order to go into the rival fight usually is like 13 HP. If you're above that, you're good to just keep playing because uh, the only thing that the rival can do is quick attack you twice, 
which won't kill you if you have like 13, 14 HP, but since that dropped EV down to seven HP, um, we'll probably see another menu here. Yeah, the, I think I went to that fight once at nine HP and I got mm -hmm. crit. And I was like, well, we're not going to be doing that again, no, are we? <laughs> yeah, so but yeah, nice. quick attack from both the Pidgey and the Pikachu is the problem of the low, look like super uh, low HP. Okay. Okay. There we go. I was just like, Matt, you gonna you gonna heal there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> and he does. Uh, 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 Drywall just... is yeah. level 15, so yeah, going into the fight. By the way, good time to mention uh, Eevee uses three very special overpowered moves. Uh, there are move tutors in this game that will teach Eevee these special moves that kind of emulate the eight Eevee Lucians, uh, and I'll have the types that match it. Uh, the first move tutor in Cerulean has the OG three evolutions for uh, Flareon, Vaporeon, and Jolteon, and their busted moves are all 90 base powered and have like ridiculously overpowered secondary effects. Yeah. Uh, bouncy Bubble, the water type move, is like Giga Drain, it heals you. Uh, the electric type move, Buzzy Buzz, always paralyzes. And the fire type move, Sizzly Slide, always burns. And, and we, we mentioned that status lag can be a little bit slow, but those secondary effects can be so valuable in a handful of fights. Yeah, we've actually already seen traps make great use of that, and we'll actually see uh, that on Drywall's screen in a second here on the Misty fight, because you are going for the Buzzy Buzz on Starmie. That's almost never going to Oko the Starmie, even though it is super effective and high power, but it will paralyze. So in turn two, Eevee will outspeed, uh, and you get the kill without actually um, losing the EV yourself. So that's the blessing of the paralysis because the opponent's speed will be half. It's pretty incredible that Misty, uh, who has the Starmie, is just ends up being one of the most dangerous uh, gym fights yeah. uh, through the whole game. And it's something we will emulate uh, later on by using Starmie against everybody else and being like, oh yeah, this is pretty good, isn't it? We're actually also going to be using Misty's signature move in this game, Skull, yeah. quite a lot on the Starmie. Yeah, but, Starmie uh, Skull. It's a, it's a little taste of our own medicine. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Starmie's coming out next for Drywall. Let's see how that yeah, goes. Yeah, burn, burn is always annoying. It's 30, Skull is 30% to burn. Um, ah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Um, so we get it on one player screen, but not the other. Um, I've been keeping stats on it. I'm almost 50% to see burn on Skull, oh, no. which is a little bit ridiculous. I it think it's just 10%, right? To have 30%. Oh, so it's 30%. Okay. 30%. So, yeah. yeah, and my stats were like 45 to 50%. So the joke was uh, Misty is using a Serene Grace <laughs> Starmie to, to double the secondary effect. Uh, it is worth noting there are no abilities in this game. Yeah. Uh, it is it is very much easy mode. There's no abilities and no held items in Let's Go. So it very much is a yellow Gen 1 remake. Yeah. Uh, Drywall going for... opting to just uh, center heal here uh, instead of uh, burn heal. Not the worst play because uh, usually you would have to count Hatba PP on uh, Nugget Bridge. And now Drywall won't have to care about that at all, since uh, he do get stored at the center heal. It is a little bit slower than just going for the burn heal, uh, but I don't dislike that decision here. Yeah, especially for beginner players, like I definitely don't dislike it. Dislike it. Um, it's still it's still in for a pretty decent time, even though he's like a couple of those you know single Pokemon fights behind. Um, this is still pretty decent for Drywall, very new player. Uh, Nugget Bridge kind of gets a, uh, a kind of a, a boring rap when it comes to the EV version. This is one of the EV yes. advantages uh, because we have this the busted moves. The coverage is perfect through Nugget Bridge. You see a yeah. Growlithe, you use the Water type move. You see a Venonat, you can use the Fire type move. There are some very small optimizations where, like on the Venonat and the Psyduck, you can just click Headbutt, still KO. You're saving yourself, you know, a couple inputs. You can just mash through the battle menu. Very, very small optimizations. Yeah, and you're saving. Uh, but you like... can't just. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, you're saving one text box per super effective move that you don't do. So if you go for the super effective move on every single Pokemon of Nugget Bridge, that's like 
uh, let me just count seven different Pokemon. If you hit them for super effective damage every time, that's seven text boxes that you have to clear. So if you go for Headbutt on like five of them, you do save like a second or two. Uh, yeah. Two, yeah, cool. two seconds, but like... Two seconds, okay. <laughs> two seconds is two seconds. Absolutely. <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? You do have to, if you do go for headbutt every time, like I said, you do have to count the headbutt PP because you don't want to run out. Since that move will be quite important for uh, a little bit later in the run. In fact, that was what I was about to say is that like, you can't quite just spam headbutt through here. Um, you do want to make sure that you have enough through route nine. There's a free heal on route 10 right before you get to the center. It's as you enter the, uh, the rocket fight, you get ambushed. It's a, it, funny enough. It's this game being the yellow remake that it is. On the couple fights that are you know new, uh, and added to the game, the game is very generous in giving you free heals either before or after some of those fights. Uh, yeah, and that's nice. one of them. It's like there's a Pokemon Center right there, and you're like, oh, I just did all this battle. I'm about to go to the Pokemon Center, and then you get ambushed by Team Rocket. The game is very nice. It gives you the free heal into that fight. Yeah. Uh, and we see that out of the Archer 2 fight as well, which is another one of those uh, new fights. But all the Jesse and James fights are in the in the spots that they all occur in Yellowbird, which is kind of funny, but kind of kind of cool. It was definitely neat for me because Pokemon Yellow was actually my first ever Pokemon game. Uh, I played it as a kid on my on my dad's old Game Boy. <laughs> the old so, the old brick. Did you have the yeah. gray one or the black one? The gray one. Yeah, I have the black one. Do you ever like sneak it like into school and everyone's just like, "What's in your pocket?" It's like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never had to do that with the old old brick. Uh, but I, I did do that with the uh, advance. Game Advance a lot. Uh, I am a little younger, I would say, not not super young. There are some young runners in this tournament, uh, but yeah. uh, the Game Boy was very game, much, yeah. Yeah, my first games were gold and yellow version. I kind of was playing them both at the same time. Uh, I did have the uh, that translucent purple Game Boy Color. Uh, and I love yeah. that the yellow version had like a little bit of color information into mm -hmm. it. Like each of the each of the towns had like a it, it was like a filter. So like yeah, you go to yeah. Cerulean, it was a blue filter on the game. Lavender was, like, was oh, purple. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lavender was purple. Uh, it's like, oh, there is a little bit of color in this original Game Boy game. Yeah, it was definitely great to see. Uh at the time when Usually the Game Boy games were, you know, always in this shade of green, gray-ish. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're way beyond that at this point. Pokemon Let's Go, <laughs> yeah. in, in my opinion, definitely the, the best looking Pokemon game for the, the this Switch. game. Uh, I, I get goosebumps just saying, like, this is the like best looking game. I love that it's not, yeah. like, too realistic. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's got that cartoony, you know, light characteristic. Yeah. It's not full chibi like it is in BDSP. But, I mean, the addition of the overworld Pokemon was so, so cool to see. Because this yeah. was the first game that did that. Yeah, uh, it was definitely also very influential. Underworld. Very influential for the series. Well, uh, Trump's just about finished here in Cerulean. Uh, went to Bill and actually turned Bill back into a human. <laughs> Didn't ditch Bill. <laughs> Didn't ditch him. <laughs> uh, so it's now going to leave Cerulean and then coming up on another important catching section on Route 6. And so a little bit of a walk. it's really important for him because if you notice, he still only has 12 Pokemon yeah. caught. Didn't get any bonuses on Route 25, which would have been the Venonat or the Meowth uh, in this version. So he's, yeah. this is going to be a vitally important sequence. And we might even see that oh. he's going to have to catch almost like quote, extra Pokemon because yeah. the next level threshold you want to hit is 18. Because if you don't hit level 18 for the upcoming boat rival fight, you're going to have a hard time KOing his Pidgeotto or even outspeed speeding yeah. his Pidgeotto. So 18 is almost vitally important for this section. And knowing that he's at literally the minimum amount of experience because he went into Misty at exactly 15. 
Um, he's going to need to get some excellent throws, first balls. Might even have to get an extra, like, glowing Pidgey or Psyduck, which is not super ideal on this route. Um, but the situation is going to almost demand it for him to get those extra levels. Yeah, this is Meanwhile, the situation. Trival, I think I saw a Venonat. Yeah, went for the Venonat catch. Uh, spot in a pretty good position, so usually you would... Um, you would kind of look at where things spawn on this route. I keep forgetting what number it is. I think it's like 25 or something. Oh no! Oh it's no! It's the optional trainer. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That's uh, we call that route 25 skip. Those two yeah. trainers that look up and down don't look fully up and down across the route. Didn't quite go high enough. Yeah. Um, not, too, kind not of... too unfortunate. I believe this trainer, it's just a Goldeen. So again, just use the Fuzzy buzz it, yeah. Uh, you can kind of snake your way through these two. That's the first instance of a trainer skip in the run. Or, um, there's going to be a second one coming up here pretty soon at the end of Route 6, which is considered to be the hardest by many. The hardest trainer skip in the run. Uh, so I'm definitely interested to see um, how our two runners are going to approach that skip. I noticed Drywall going into that skip, very hesitant, usually just trying to like tap, 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 like just walk into it. Um, but I feel that like, as long as you give yourself like a running start, um, you can keep yourself pretty much straight as an arrow. Uh, that's really unfortunate on Trub screen. Um, Jigglypuff, you have to YOLO throw because otherwise it will usually jump away. But instead he got the attack, so he does lose that first ball multiplier on the experience. Yeah, that's unfortunate, especially for, for this experience situation. Uh, and it, Jigglypuff doesn't just jump away. It awkwardly and slowly floats away. And it's really hard to catch it while it is floating because the game tries to autocorrect your throws, which can actually work against you if the Pokemon is still moving. So you really want to get that quick, excellent catch, which Jigglypuff just gave the worst cycle there where it attacks I, I usually don't mind because it, as long as the Pokemon attacks, uh, it will stay still for a little bit. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, the experience route being low, it's just, it's less, it feels like it's just compounding. Like, oh, I have low experience already, and then I got the worst possible situation for that situation on that. He does first ball the Vulpix, which is good. And does it's hit 18. level 18 anyways, so yeah. uh, so Trubs is in kind of a solid position now. Uh, at least has mitigated uh, a lot of the danger. Um, definitely still... needed both. Yeah, could still get outsped by Rival here, I think. Right? I don't think it's guaranteed at level 18. It's uh, not. It's definitely not guaranteed at level 18, uh, and I believe level 19 at worst you are speed oh, tied. Yeah. Uh, and he's gonna opt to go for a glowing Pidgey here. Uh, I, I think don't that's a good call. Either. Yeah, Pidgey, it's a good catch on Route 6 because it is just one level off of evolving into Pidgeotto. You can opt to go for it later uh, because uh, it can spawn on Route 17 at a much higher level where, it's, where it can fully evolve into Pidgeot just within two level ups. So that's super nice. But since Trubs' experience is pretty low here, going for the early Pidgey, especially because it's glowing, uh, is in my eyes the correct call. Yeah, and ended up hitting level 19. Uh, I also saw on Drywall screen, he picked up the extra lure, uh, a staple mm -hmm. of the uh, the AOP runs. Uh, ooh, Abra. we got That's Abra huge. on the screen. That is massive. Huge bonus Pokemon. Uh, and it was very kind because it was looking away because the, the shtick with Abra is that it will teleport despawn if you approach it from in front. Uh, so since it was facing completely away, it was very kind to uh, be an easy catch for Trubs here. Uh, ends up being a pretty easy catch rate as well, because the catch rate formula takes the CP into account. It's very much Pokemon Go-like, where the higher the level or the higher the CP a Pokemon is, the lower its catch rate does become. Uh, and since the CP um, formula just adds up all the stats. HP ah. ends up being uh, kind of the most important of those like stats. And Abra has like no HP. So it actually gets yeah. a, it's a fair catch rate because it has low HP because it has a lower CP. Yeah, Trubs does fail the Vermilion skip. Again, this one's kind of the most difficult one. 
It's just you two trainers yeah. looking inward. It looks like they gate the end of the route, but since you can never fight the uh, the trainers as a double battle, there's just a little bit of space at the end of both of their visions that you can split. You basically can just go straight down the route. You missed it a little bit to the left. Again, easy for the EV version yeah. because the left trainer has a Charmander, the right trainer has a Bell Sprout. Use the super effective move and you're fine. The Pika player does not want to fail on the right side. Yeah, it's... you'll have a lot harder time with uh, with Bell Sprout. Missing that really hurts for Pika. Eevee uses like thirty seconds to to either one of those optionals, but Pika, especially with the Bell Sprout, um, takes at least two turns. So if you hit it, it's a little more painful for Pika. Now on to the Vermilion shop here for traps, which is the second uh, shop of the run. Pretty huge, uh, buying a lot of stuff here for the mid-game portion of the run. Uh, like 20 Great Balls, more Axe items, uh, lures and repels, escape ropes, you know, all of the good items that will help the runners uh, hit hard or get a bunch of Pokemon or just get out of a dungeon very quickly. <laughs> I do notice that every every runner's Vermilion shop is like a little bit different. Mm. Um, it will depend on like how many safety items you pick up, especially if you grab the extra PP up. I saw Matt attempted one of the other hidden RNG items, did not get rewarded, ended up picking up a pretty Definitely. wing <laughs> instead of getting possibly another nugget or a big pearl, which can sell for a lot of money. Yeah. Um, the difference, and, and like I know my shop, it's like 10x attacks, 10 lures, 14x special attacks. I noticed on Trump's screen he got 12x attacks and 12x special attacks. Uh, so his shop was a little bit different than mine. You'll see etiquette do something a little bit different as well. It just depends on what kind of strats that you're thinking of down the line, mainly in the hideout section. Because for Eevee version, there's like four different ways you can attack the rocket hideout section. You can, if you have high special attack, you might be, you know, doing it one way versus if you are using Needle King as another way. So it's it gives like a clue, but usually you're not even set in stone in terms of what you do or don't want to do for the route. Drywall just kind of looking around. Did get a Vulpix. I think he's looking for a Jigglypuff. Might want to consider going for that Pidgey. I didn't see what level he was at. I think and he, as... And if he really wants to... Well, the Pidgey flew away. Ah, that's, that's <laughs> uh, too bad. If he really wants... I mean, he has the extra lure. Not a bad play to do what he's going to do exactly right now, which is to reset the route. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go back in this guardhouse, come right back out, and just kind of reset those spawns. I was actually considering adding the extra lure to my uh, race strats as well because I'm running Pika for this tournament and uh, Pika's Route 6 is uh, a little more important because you're trying to get a Growler to spawn that you're going to use as a um, fight partner for Pikachu for that portion of the game. And if you don't get it, it's kind of rough, uh, which actually happened to me during my tournament race so oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe I should have picked up that extra lore <laughs> it is you a little out back, of the way and back on Chub screen we get the first example of yes. a two on one trainer fight uh, we've been seeing that second controller the second Joy-Con be uh, summoned and used for every single catch up to this point but it can also be used in battle as well which offers a massive advantage because um, you can just two on one anybody like what the trainers in Legends Arceus do to you. Um, <laughs> it is a bit on the slow side to do it, so it's only done if necessary. And what you will usually see is Eevee or Starmie will attack while the partner Pokemon just pumps X items into it to basically set up as they attack. Right, right while going for the minutes, get gets it. Great nice. skip. That was that was clean. Yeah. yeah, that's how I like doing the skip, is just run at it and just make micro adjustments if you think you're a little bit left or right. Yeah, that was very very well executed by Drywall. Yeah, so the two controller fights, you only do them if it's like necessary to win, because the idea is like, if say you have like three turns of setup, 
If you're taking three turns to set up single controller, there might also be a situation where if you're getting hit, you probably have to heal, which makes like a fourth turn of setup. Uh, and then it's just like, okay, it's actually just faster to do a two controller uh, and just pump X items in as needed instead of just waiting the whole time and then having to heal once or twice as a single controller fight. There are all, uh, Rival in particular gets the most double controller fights against him because his Pidgeotto and Pidgeot knows the move Sand Attack. And if you don't want to set up a guard spec turn one, which is just an extra setup turn one controller, uh, you can just two controller and get rid of the Pidgeotto Pidgeot immediately without ever having to use that guard spec. Yeah. Uh, Eevee usually does still buy one guard spec specifically for the next fight that we're going to see on, on Trap's screen. Uh, the Route 9 Eevee Trainer. Funny enough, both trainers on that fight have sand attack. Because the huh. sand true also has it. But uh, usually but you can just... This, you can yeah. usually get the one shot. If you're level 20, I think it's guaranteed unless you're minus special attack. Uh, if you're level 19, it's not guaranteed, so just don't be unlucky. <laughs> right, so traps making their way back through the underground, uh, right back to Cerulean, and then going to the east across Route 9, uh, whereas Drywall is just entering us then here, uh, trying to face the rival and also pick up the chop down secret technique, which, uh, of course, uh, is the substitute for the HM cut. It's the runners cut down those pesky bushes that are right in the way, like this, on trap screen. No HMs in this game. Yes. And uh not only are there no HMs, uh, you don't need a specific badge to be able to use the HM or secret technique. Yeah, which uh, basically... Which yeah. Which makes it so that this game is very is even more open world than it is. It, it basically opens up the world just like that with the chop down TM. You can basically go anywhere and do anything, which is exactly what the runners are gonna do because they didn't go or, or traps didn't go to search, even though that gym is right in town. Uh, no, instead we're gonna do some other stuff, basically finish the rest of the story, catch a lot of Pokemon, and then at some point in like an hour from now, uh, we're going to think about defeating some gym leaders. <laughs> Look at the time. Yeah, an hour, eh, hour 15. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just don't have to fight any other gym leaders because we don't need the badges to access all those secret techniques. Uh, cut is kind of a weird one because it is Misty's gym that would give HM Cut access. Um, mm -hmm. But the others like Strength and Surf, uh, you just don't need the gym badges, which I'm trying to remember, um, like for like, I think it would be Koga's gym that would give Surf, and I don't even remember what would give Strength. It's It's been such a long time since I, like, played Gen 1. I also don't know. This would be a, this would be a good trivia question for chat. It's like, what, what gym badge unlocks set? Set HM. See, I know it for Gen 2 because I've done enough randomizers to uh. to know that you need Storm Badge to use Fly. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the Picnicker that Trubs just beats is the only fight that you have to use the Guard Spec on. Uh, it kind of works doubly because uh, the Eevee has Sand Attack and Growl, and you can yeah. basically prevent them both on that first turn. And both of them really make the fights very annoying because uh, you don't want to have your attack lowered uh, and you also don't want your accuracy lowered. You could miss an attack or an attack would maybe do not quite enough damage and waste your turn. So that got spec really. Usually it's worth the money. Um, Eevee can just sometimes go for swift turn one, which you don't want to see because that means you wasted the got spec, but you know. It happens, it is random AI. Uh, what's also nice is that uh, if you saw the rare candy pickup on Route 6, on the exact left side of the route, there is a hidden guard spec over there. So it's like, oh, I would like to use my money on something else. There, there is a guard spec to just pick up. Huh. Um, 
which I think I've done once in some weird situation. Um, there's an idea where you can skip the guard spec by if you know you can KO the Eevee on the first turn as a two controller fight. So basically headbutt yeah, yeah. and then X attack. Uh, at level 20, it's a range, and it's usually a pretty poor range unless you have high attack. And you usually only even want to attempt it at a plus attack nature anyways. And even then, it's, it's still not guaranteed. Uh, so it's a little bit risky to go for. I think there was one situation where I was like, oh, I bet I'll have enough attack. Finally saw like a level up stat, and I was like, I don't have enough attack. So I like chickened out, and I was like, I'll just grab the guards, but... <laughs> All right, try one now. Going for the return vermilion skip because you have to hit it twice. That looks good. Perfect. Perfect. Love to see and it. Also. bonus, Jigglypuff spawn, which he didn't get on the first trip, which is incredible. I, I'm shocked that anything would spawn on Route 6 unlured. Yeah. Uh, ah. Unfortunately, the, the jumping animation uh, caught him off guard there. Yeah, it's going to be great for experience now, but Unlord Jigglypuff, of course, is always going to be a little bit less worth in terms of experience. But you still can get those. Ooh, ooh, that was ooh, a very. Ooh, 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 that was close. Type pass on top of the screen. Uh, yeah. We're both actually still... pretty good on experience. Um, I noticed that Trubs is already level 20, and I think Drywall just hit level 21, so he's doing fine. Um, so here we get to one of the first and really one of the most important catch sequences of the game Route 10 and then Rock Tunnel. Route 10 is such a flex uh, option for the players because there are basically five different Pokemon that can spawn. Nidoran male, Nidoran female, Spearow, Rattata, and Krabby. And depending on what your catch route looks like already, like if you have a high catch count already, you might only need to catch three of those five things, maybe even two in some situations. If you're on the lower side, might have to wait around for four of those five things. Uh, you typically don't need all five. Krabby's a bonus. Uh, anyways, it's only a 10% to spawn. Uh, and Matt was pretty low to start. I think he's really evened out, uh, but it just kind of depends on what he uh, wants from this route. So far, two of the five have spawned Rattata and this uh, Nidoran female. Uh, two Raticates on the screen. A lot of runners love to go for early rap because Raticate on this route is actually worth quite a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, it's like 1,200 experience um, just as a normal yeah. catch. Uh, and if you get it, su if you get a super size, it's 5,000 experience, uh -huh. which can be absolutely uh, tremendous unless you have like a full party of Pokemon. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, what's that like? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Spiro immediately, okay, looking much better for Trump's side. He's got three of the five things very quickly, and he's only missing the Nidoran male now. Uh, this is also a nice uh, part of the game where in the previous shop, we actually sell all of our Pokeballs. We get 19 Great Balls, which gives us one Premier Ball, and the way uh, your catch, like the game handles what balls you throw, is that when you run out of balls, it will default to the lowest oh. level of ball possible. So your first catch will be a Great Ball Premier Ball. And once you use up the Premier Ball, you only have Great Balls in your inventory. So the game is automatically switching you over to double Great Balls uh, at the point where you really want to start throwing double Great Balls. Yeah, the catch mechanics in this game are very interesting. Uh, we can talk about this a little bit more in a second here. I just want to highlight Drywall I had to turn around to Cerulean because he did not have lures. He had one lure, uh, so I had to return here and buy some lures at the Cerulean uh, yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, I, I saw the backtracking. I was like, where, where is he going? Where is he going? Oh, we got to cut the bush. Yeah. Unfortunate, uh, but luckily the Cerulean Mart isn't far away from uh, that point. So uh, just, just a little bit of detail. Good, good knowledge and awareness to be like, oh, oh yeah, I need to go to the yeah, definitely good, uh, good awareness here. Sadly, has to cut down this bush a second time now, uh, but we'll be right back on track here to reach Route 9, uh, where Traps is currently on the Rocket Gun fight that you were talking about a couple of minutes ago. 
uh, it's another one of those eradicate fights, so you usually go for uh, the Buzzy Bus turn one. I didn't see if Traps actually did that. Because sometimes if you have pretty good attack on EV, you can just go for two headbutts and that will do the trick. Yeah, the idea with the two Raticates on these routes is that the first Raticate has low speed but high defense, and the Rocket Raticate has high speed but low defense. Um, because it's so low defense and you're a higher level anyways, you typically just go for the double headbutt. It is extremely favored, even with low-ish attack. Um, so, so you usually just try to two-shot it uh, and not worry about it. The first one you kind of have. If you outspeed, you can just go for headbutts. Uh, if you don't, you have to hit that buzzy buzz. Trubs actually does opt to go back to the route. There are two ways to handle route 10 uh, if you need extra catches. One, you can repel and relure, or you can hit that grunt fight, which does reset those spawns, and then just go yeah. back, which he opted to do. He did get the Krabby, so I can only imagine he's going to leave now with four out of the five things. The only one he was missing is uh, Nidoran Mail, which I don't know yet if he was or was not planning to use Nidoking strats. Uh, if he really is in set, I think he's going to stay, but I would be hard-pressed to think that he would stay. This missed uh, the support trainer, so I think. Yeah, just moving on. Yeah, just moving on. So it's just one of those strats where it's like, okay, he cannot do the Nido King strats, which is borrowed from the Pika side. Uh, you don't yeah. use all of the strats. Like, I think there are Thrash strats involved on the Pikachu side. I think it's mostly just uh, Poison Jabby. And a Red Shaft first spawn, what's going on? Rare Char, wow. It's the first spawn. Wow. Okay, sure. Red Char, uh... Like a 0.5% chance to spawn. Ah, I didn't hit the X and that's really Almost. unfortunate. It is a pretty rough catch though. Uh, so usually you like to um, have it spawn. Get it first ball. Wow. That's really good. That's amazing. That's great, especially since he did miss that excellent throw. So that was yeah. probably like a coin flip to catch. Yeah, so that's really good for a trap. It's very nice because it's also just one level away off of uh, evolving here. So you can just put into the party, get to uh, to Pokedex entries out of it. Very, very nice. Um, usually you do want to see it spawn after you've gotten the Ultra Balls. There's an Ace Trainer fight in this in Rock Tunnel that gives you Ultra Balls. Uh, so if it spawns later, it, it'll be a little bit easier to catch Hoof Drywall with a spicy <laughs> spinner pass. <laughs> both, both of them doing that. Yeah. Coming on to that 10 now. Uh, and female spawn that's nice so that was, that was i noticed this just on trub screen like right away is that he did opt to put that charmander in his party he put it in over krabby um whereas hmm. the other four pokemon um that were in his party right now all evolve in one level the Rattata, the nidoran uh the spiro and even his bellsprout are all one away and now his charmander is all also one away I personally would have opted to just wait yeah. until after what just happened, which is, and this goes back to that like pairing, is that he has four Pokemon that are one level away. I would have waited until after all four of those evolved and just do this big mass deposit and yeah. then bring that Charmander back in. And thinking ahead, I would pair Charmander with Zubat, another one level evolution that you're likely going to get in Rock Tunnel. And then when you do that second deposit, those two Pokemon are likely going to be deposited together as well. Um, it's not like necessarily a mistake per se, but it's just one of those like high level optimizations that you can start thinking about at a very high level of how to party manage through this sequence because you are catching a ton of Pokemon very quickly. Yeah, you really wanna, um, you wanna, have efficient menus, especially in this a part of the game where there's a lot of uh, catches, a lot of deposits. So um, pairing the caps, like you said, is a really good idea to save some time in this area. Now going for a shop catch here, which is another one of those Pokemon that needs four levels to evolve. It's still nice to have, but you know, those extra levels. Not great. 
it does add up. It's the four levels plus the one move, and it's the same yeah. as uh, same as Cubone as well. Um, yeah. So when we talk about a term like overhead, uh, that's what we mean. Is it's like, oh, your basically Machoke is ten seconds of overhead in addition to the 30 seconds of the evolution taking place. I know there's a there's a good copy pasta in like, I think it's either Etchy or Etiquette's chat, where it's like, you know, people say that every Pokemon is 30 seconds, but that's a lie. <laughs> because a it's 30 seconds for just the catch and 30 seconds for just the evolution, but every level and every move it tries to learn. Uh, and even if you have to run backwards, and forward to go get that catch. It all kind of adds up to its overhead. So it ends up being a bit closer to like 35 or 40 seconds per. Uh, and the 30 seconds only really comes into play when you have only an evolution left to take place. But pretty solid start for Shrubs uh, with Charmander the Machop and the Cubone. He's still looking for the most important Pokemon in this sequence, which of course is Rhyhorn, uh, our ride Pokemon, which is a lot faster than the X and Y Rhyhorn ride Pokemon. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot faster. Since this <laughs> game doesn't have a bike, the only way to increase your movement speed is through ride Pokemon. You can ride a bunch of Pokemon in this game. Not every one of those actually increases the movement speed. But Rhyhorn is super convenient, uh, makes you go a lot quicker, uh, gives a nice chunk of experience as well. Uh, so we always want to get it, basically. That's another important catch in here, which is going to be the Grappler. It's just the highest experience yield out of the catches in Rock Tunnel. But that's really no use in riding Grappler. So ideally you want to get them both. <laughs> right. Yeah, Drywall doing the same thing as doing the uh, rocket fight and then going back up to Route 10 to finish up some catches. Also got pretty good spawns here on the, re uh, on the return with uh, Nidoran Mail and the Krabby. So it's probably going to move on after that. Wow. Yeah, here's a very, very clean uh, deposit menu here. Four things to yeah. deposit. Um, Oh, we forgot to put the uh, Cubone and uh, Krabby back into the party. Yeah, that's unfortunate because be since they take four levels to level up, you really do want them to get all of the experience they can get. Otherwise, they will stick around and take up space in the party uh, for quite some time during the run. It's not quite as bad an Eevee version, Especially if you don't go for Raihan strats. Uh, but in Pikachu version, it's actually like party management in this part of the run can be pretty tough because half of your party is taken up by Pokemon that you need with the Pikachu, the, the Nidoking, and the Raihan. So if you have Krabby, Machop, and Cubone, party management is a little finicky. Uh, that's the Raihan spawn for traps. Perfect timing. Ideally, you want to see that as early as possible because, of course, it's faster to get the movement speed increase sooner. Uh, but this is a perfectly fine uh, location for the right hand to spawn. Only gets the knife here, so there is a small chance for breakout. But stay sound perfect. Yeah, that was that was very lucky. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say, Rhyhorn's one of Rhyhorn and Graveler are also one of those Pokemon where you're like to berry or not to berry, because if you don't hit it with a berry, it's about a ninety percent catch uh, on an excellent throw, and if yeah. you do, uh, it's it's guaranteed if you get the excellent throw on it. So I think a lot, I think you'll see a lot of people in this part of the game be like, okay, I need the experience, I need that first ball multiplier, I'm just gonna hit it with that berry and not worry about. it. Um, yeah. But at that top level, it's like, okay, I can 90%, 90%, just don't be unlucky. Yeah, I usually go for the berry, especially in race settings, because uh, it makes it a, a lot more consistent. It is fine, like you said, 90%, very favorable uh, to just get the excellent without the berry. But for both Raihorn and Gravely, you kind of don't want to miss out on the first ball excellent experience uh, modifiers for those catches. I'll be 
I'll be curious to see if Matt has realized that uh, his Machop, Cubone, and Krabby are so Krabby. not in his party. Oh, that's pretty uh, unfortunate. And now. might and might be just outright missing three Pokemon as a result. I can take a look at his tracker if he's got it uh, uh, marked or not. Just uh, he okay. has unmarked Machop or okay. Machop. Uh, he's unmarked Kingler. Oh, he's yeah. unmarked, so he is anticipating on not evolving those three Pokemon, which do involve the four levels and the move. So, so he's probably I mean, thinking like these are forty second catches and not thirty second catches, yeah. and could get, and it's just going to go for a late game. I personally would not recommend this. No, um, but he has a standard late game anyways. Uh, as long as he, well, as long as he gets Ghastly, Psyduck. Uh, coughing, Go to and right now does not have Tentacool marked. So this is yeah. what I would, like, this is my normal route, or like, how I start, but I'm not sure why he's not leveraging yeah. uh, at least two of those evolutions to be able to skip a catch, and just have like, another layer of comfort in the race. Yeah, I could definitely see skipping one of these evolutions, one of the four level evolutions, probably the last one that you catch you just don't evolve but skipping them all might force you into something like tentacle later which you never want to see it is the advantage he has right now is that he's got 34 pokemon and he could still yeah. catch one more in zubat so having 35 pokemon exiting tunnel is actually very hot it's fantastic um, so I'm yeah. not yeah i'm not so so i i guess i i, I see the logic in mm -hmm. trying to skip those pokemon because you already have an insanely high catch count. Uh, I just think there are safer and not even all that much slower options when it comes to um, just having them and, and just making sure that you get those evolutions. Uh, he definitely has the party space for it, that's for sure. I think that's a that'd be a very interesting point of discussion. The, I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna ask him about it after the race. Why not Evo four level things? Yeah. Ah, gets burned by the flamethrower. That's really unfortunate. Ooh, yeah. This fight is actually one of those like surprisingly dangerous fights on the EV side. Uh, because you do have a set of turns, so you give the Vulpix a, usually a flamethrower. And you yeah. are typically outsped by the upcoming Kadabra, which uses Psybeam. If you have to use that burn heal, uh, you've taken a bit more chip damage. Okay, we're going to see Matt just kind of bail out here. Mm -hmm. So he's going to heal with the second controller to really guarantee that nothing funny happens. Like, for example, if you got crit by Psybeam, he would die. Yeah. the um, Summoning the second controller mid-fight is a little slow because the animation is very slow, but uh, it's definitely a good play for safety here. And that's the, and by the way, that's the trainer that uh, awards you the five Ultra Balls, probably one of the most important uh, like trainer fights in the whole game uh it's funny enough um a lot of beginners don't know this is that the trainers in this game don't just give you money they do give you pokeballs uh most will just give you regular pokeballs but yeah. some will give you great balls and these these late game ace trainers actually give you ultra balls uh so those and so we never buy ultra balls in the run those five ultra balls are our main supply that we get from that one ace trainer there will be three Ultra Balls that we can pick up in Tower. Most runners will pick those up. And there's an additional five that you can get uh, after the Giovanni fight that are in Rocket Hideout. So that is a maximum of 13 Ultra Balls that you can have in the run. Uh, but eight is usually sufficient, usually. Uh, if you have a low catch count, you'll typically want to get those extra five. Uh, but eight should be good enough. And if you have an extremely high catch count, and I have noticed this from a couple runners already this tournament, I've actually skipped the three. Uh, an item pickup takes about four seconds. So you're saving four seconds, but you are going to be missing out on what could be three very valuable Ultra Balls late game. So yeah, yeah. Not, a bad, not a bad time for Matt. This is like... This is one of the sections when you leave Rock Tunnel is you kind of... Most players will know what their pace looks like at this yeah. point. Uh, again, our timer is about a minute off. Uh, so about a 121 exit with 34 Pokemon. Very high catch counts. 
um, not quite at that like super top level. Uh, you would typically want to see like a 116 or a 117 exit with 33 or 34 Pokemon. That kind of puts you on like 302 pace uh, or even faster, uh, knowing how the end game has been optimized even further. Uh, but this is a very respectable run. I would not be surprised, Matt, uh, just outright PB. This could be like a 307. Uh, just the more I think about him, I'm like, yeah, this could be 307, just depending on how his mid and late game goes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is a very solid run so far uh, from Matt. So very interested to see where it goes from here. Now fighting Tower Rival. Same idea as the previous one. The double controller strat, because you want to just get rid of the Pidgeotto right away. Uh, it does have sand attack, uh, but as long as you outspeed, which is very typical. Uh, in fact, it's easier to outspeed this one. Uh, though Matt is just level uh, 25, which is, like, that's, again, the minimum threshold that you want to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as long as you have, like, one speed AV. Ooh, 52. I wonder if he just outsped. <laughs> I'm actually curious about this. I'm going to look this up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then it's pretty safe from here. The one variance is that Rival can send out either Raichu or Gloom second. Mm. Uh, if you get Gloom second, you'll just X attack and then X attack to go to plus four. If you get Raichu second, uh, you can only uh, go to plus two for Eevee if you have double edge already at level 28. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to X attack the Rhyhorn to go for a drill run, a plus two drill run, which would kill the Raichu. Uh, but plus two headbutt does not kill Raichu. I always hate to see Raichu first in Eevee version because uh, drill run 95% accurate, uh, so you can miss it. And it usually happens when you don't want it to. I mean, you never want it to, but yeah. uh, really annoying to get the drill run miss here. I feel that drill run misses come in waves. Like, <laughs> I'll never miss a drill run for like. 10 runs in a row, and then I'll have that one run where I miss three in one. <laughs> yeah. Just annoying to have an accurate moves in a uh, Pokemon speed run, but you know, that's not going to be the end of it. We're going to have a lot of fun <laughs> with inaccurate moves later on. <laughs> yeah, thankfully this isn't the, uh, the dreaded Fire Red Leaf Green <laughs> runs where, man, I can't even imagine clicking the move Mega Kick as often as they do in uh, that run. 75% yeah. accuracy. I get it. It's 120 power. Cool. But like 75 accuracy? That's really right. That's crazy that they are effectively forced to go for that. I just noticed that uh, Matt also reorganized the back menu where map is now in the upper left corner. Don't know if that was a choice. I think it is because if it wasn't, um, I'm sure he would have put it back because yeah. player comfort is so important in this run, which is why sometimes you'll see a different like move order. Uh, for example, Matt has mm -hmm. Buzzy Buzz in slot two instead of Sizzly Slide, which is the opposite of how I do it. And it's just like, it might save one or two inputs throughout the entire run. But you don't want to, like, change your move order just to save one input for a three-hour yeah. run if it's going to mess up with your comfort. Um, but that's a that's a thing, like, people can play around with is that, yeah, your bag order can be moved around. Like, you can move, like, the medicine pocket and the bag and the map. And he's put the map in the top left corner, probably opting to be like, oh, I can get really fast fly menus because now I don't have to go down two inputs. Um, obviously, it's all kind of back and forth because then your bag menu is now down in inputs, um, or your box menu is down in inputs instead of being in the top left. Uh, for me, I just kind of keep it normal. Um, there is one thing, and it's back to the uh, the AOP category, is that in AOP, since you have the fossil uh, in what is usually the lure spot, I'll actually flip-flop the lure and the fossil in my Route 9 menu to put the lure back in my like comfort position. Um, yeah, and those those it's just those little things that comfort is so important because you just want to be able to flick that you know flick your Joy-Con stick and get to the the input that you want. 
And I up here I also did this a lot, especially in the, in the portions of the runway you have to repair, reset a lot uh, for certain rare spawns to appear. Uh, it's just more comfortable if you have them at the end of the bag, basically, even though they wouldn't end up there uh, just from buying them. So I have an answer to my own question earlier. Huh? Matt was speed tied with Pidgeotto oh. on Rival 4. The Pidgeotto has 52 speed, and that's exactly what he had at level 25. Oh. Uh, which means he has zero AVs in speed, because that is, like, absolutely minimum. The true neutral speed there. Winning the coin flip, though, I'd love to see it. Now going for the synchronize here in uh, the Saladon Pokemon Center that will guarantee that each and every catch that happens throughout the rest of the run is going to have a modest nature. Uh, so we force the nature, which is, of course, going to be important for our late game main. And it's kind of nice because, again, there are no abilities. It synchronizes the... It's like the signature ability of Ralts uh, yeah. and a handful of other Pokemon. You'll typically see like like competitive players um, who want to catch wild Pokemon use that synchronize to synchronize the Ralts' nature to the wild Pokemon. That's its effect in battle. Um, it also will mirror status conditions in battle as well. So it's kind of nice that there is like this weird synchronize ability uh, as that. Uh, and it just, yeah, it just outright guarantees it for the rest of the game. Now, unless your name is Joker Sleeps and you just outright want to not do that, then, you know, to each their own. And you can bank on getting a quiet-natured Starmie for your endgame and <laughs> oh, yeah, deal with that. it as it comes. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, that is kind of extremely important for the late game. What's really nice about it, though, is that even uh, for a Pokemon like Dodrio, uh, which can be used on the blue fight. The modest nature actually doesn't hurt it at all. It is just like, it's just clearly powerful enough to be able to dispose of that executor on blue, even though it is modest nature and not even neutral attack. Yeah. Ooh, drywall going for an onyx here. That all is. Right, th thoughts on onyx, Trib? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, High I, five. I, I... <laughs> yeah, uh, Onyx is just such a trap, uh, both in Moon and in Rock Tunnel, but especially in Rock Tunnel because it's not Ooh, worth. Applause. Still applause get it though. The catch. Yeah, that's yeah, good for drywall Onyx, definitely. But... Yeah, Onyx is particularly bad because the circle, the catch circle, is so high. Yeah. That even though the game auto corrects with the Joy-Con. It just doesn't work for Onyx for some reason. It's basically impossible to hit an excellent on Onyx. Uh, you I can get a great if you time it correctly, but... I usually just go for nice, because yeah, it gives yeah. me the biggest, like... And I, like, hit the bottom of the circle, too, when it yeah. comes to that nice throw. I have hit greats before on Onyx, but it's more out of luck. Uh, it's yeah. just not its not a very nice catch, don't do Ony it. Onyx is okay in Mount Moon because, again, at a lower level and then at a lower CP, you get a higher mm -hmm. catch rate out of it. Um, so that early on, it tends to be okay. You have access to double Great Balls by that point. Um, but here in Rock Tunnel, now it's level 24. You still only have double Great Balls um, for most of the uh, area. At this point, he could have also switched to that Ultra Ball because you do get the, uh, the Sophia Ultra Balls. But even then, it's still not great to go for, um, so it's just typically avoid it. It's, I would say Onyx is probably, like, the second worst catch in the entire game behind only Firo. I've never had to go for Firo, uh, so I'll take I, you at your word for that. <laughs> I never want to go for Firo. I think I tried it once in the early days, and I'm like, oh, this is awful, because Firo is high, like the Onyx, ah, okay. but it's also moving left to right because it's flying. Yeah, that's and really it annoying. has a jank catch rate, so I think Firo is probably the worst, and Onyx is not far behind. But yeah, this hideout section is is so interesting, especially on EV version. Again, I I was not kidding when I said there's probably like four different ways to start attacking this sequence, because unlike other Pokemon games where your all your experience is just in fights, so you know exactly what level 
and like exactly what your stats are going to be, especially in the nipped categories. And this, uh, but unfortunately, since a lot of the experience is through catching, you can have a wide amount of experience yeah. through this area. And what we're experiencing on Trump's screen is probably like the lowest amount of experience that you can have in a run. Again, had to use the rare candy uh. back in Cerulean was just level 25 for the uh, Rival 4 fight, uh, yeah. and probably won't even be level 28 for the upcoming Jesse and James fight. In fact, he won't. He's still at level 27. That's like minimum. But there yeah. are some rooms that can be as high as level 32. So you have a five level disparity between your like potential lowest and highest. And then your attack stats, special attack stats, speed, defense can be different natures. And depending on that combination, there's so many different ways that you can just attack the hideout section. Oh, I have high experience and high attack. I'm gonna use double edge everything. In fact, my 259 pace run double edged that Grimer because I didn't think that, uh, I didn't even think that the Glitzy Glow was gonna two shot because I had I ran a uh, I ran an Adamant Eevee on that one. Ah, yes. So I was like, oh, I wonder if double edge will kill. Hey, would you look at that? And there's just these weird little things, these differences that you can do. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anybody double-edge the Grimer, but somebody had like mentioned it once. And I'm like, oh, I bet this would work. And all of a sudden I saved a turn, maybe two. Yeah. Uh, so there's just, just depending on if you have high experience, high attack, high special, or if you're using the Needle King and Rhyhorn strats, there's like four different ways to go through this. Yeah. Now, if you are relying on Eevee, uh, I think, I think, if I remember this correctly, you really do want to be level 28 for Jesse and James. I think it makes the fight more consistent. Uh, yeah, Weezing can be a range, a plus four Glitzy Glow range. Uh, that's really unfortunate. Uh, if you are only level 27. And uh, Matt's definitely going to be level 27 for that. Uh, probably even going to be level 27 for Archer at this point. I want to mention that at level 28, Eevee does learn Double Edge. And depending on where you are progress-wise, you may opt to teach it or you may opt to skip it. Skip it. Uh, I had a discussion with Etiquette about like a couple weeks ago about this. And uh, it basically came down to there's a Hypno fight uh, here in Hideout. If you can learn Double Edge before the Hypno fight, uh, it's like recommended to teach it then. But if you're not, then you probably skip it. Because the Hypno fight alone, like the two, like the Hypno in Victory Road and the Jinx in Victory Road, could put you to sleep uh, mm -hmm. with Hypnosis. But if you have Double Edge, you can two control that fight and just get rid of it in one turn and you never have to worry about Hypnosis. Um, so yeah. that alone made it feel like, okay, if you get Double Edge here, you can use it for this fight and the next fight, which is the uh, Radita Voltorb fight. And you're getting enough use out of the double edge to warrant teaching it, even if it's for just those two fights. Um, oh, oh hit, no. Well, like not... Oh, uh, so Matt's going for Rhyhorn strats here, but uh, Rhyhorn got glared and was fully paralyzed, so didn't actually get the drill run off here. In his first turn, very unfortunate. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he went for the this type of strat. So the Rhyhorn strats for Jesse and James is uh, the use of Drill Run. Yeah. Uh, plus two Drill Run usually can kill the Arbok at level 25, and then can be a... Well, if you go to plus four with Rhyhorn, is guaranteed on the Weezing. Uh, sometimes you have Nido King as the partner instead of Eevee, and the Helping Hand plus two Drill Run can be a range on the Weezing. It ended up working out just fine, uh, ended up being a three-turn fight, which is average for that double controller fight. Uh, though Eevee also averages a three-turn fight because the Arbok is arranged at plus two and then Weezing is guaranteed at plus four. But I think as we mentioned, because his Eevee was still only level 27, probably opted to go for this uh, Rhyhorn strat. But if we remember way back in the Vermilion shop, he got two extra X attacks and two fewer X special attacks. And that was probably to do this fight specifically this way. So he may have been locked into doing it this way because of his shopping in the Vermilion shop Aww. like 50 minutes ago. Actually seems to be going for 
an interesting strat for uh, these next couple of fights here as well, bringing in the Graveler into the party. Not yeah, going for the... Right. Yeah. Yeah, so Archer 1 uh, is going for... This is kind of like standard. You're going to see Glitzy Glow yeah. at plus 2. It's going to be a 2-shot on this Weezing. Uh, and then we'll plus 4 for the Golbat, which comes up next. Uh, Graveler is an interesting Pokemon because in a... Kind of the mid-iteration of this, it's not this battle. It's the next one on Giovanni. Uh, we call that Boom Straps. You're actually going to see that go to plus four and then self-destruct on um, the Persian because the Persian only has normal type moves, so it can't do any damage to this Graveler. So long as so long as he doesn't get crit three times in a row, uh, we'll be able to just self-destruct and get rid of the Persian and then switch back into the Eevee. Uh, because it does have a death animation, it is a, like a little bit slower. Uh, you're also going to see yeah. what I like this version of the fight, which is to go for a rock slide, or if you have Rhyhorn, rock throw on that, uh, and not waste an extra X item. I personally like doing that. But yeah, the boom strats are actually quite safe for Giovanni. The current version uh, likes to uh, use Eevee and then Sizzly slide to get burn effect on the Persian, because even critical hits are still halved in damage because of the burn's effect on the attack side, of course. Um, so typically, Eevee can leverage that. Again, so long as you don't get crit three times in a row or see Slash on turn one. Uh, but here we are going to see the uh, the Graveler Boom Strats on Matt's end. It's just a very fun strat. Just to update everyone watching uh, exclusively this stream right now on uh, PSR TV 1, uh, Aspect just finished his race with a 307 13. I had gotten word mid run that Aspect caught Tower Cubone. Yes, I also saw that. That is, uh, that is pretty, pretty incredible. But yeah, there you go. Graveler goes boom. It, uh, I believe it always kills the Persian so long as that's level 25. Again, one of those level thresholds that you like to hit for both the right horn and then the Graveler. Eevee comes out. Easy work with Bouncy Bubble on the opposing right horn. Yeah, nice safe. It's, a, it's very safe. It's very consistent. It's just not top end speed that Sizzly Slide can do. Meanwhile, Drywall is just about to start the sequence and is doing an older iteration of Hideout. Um, so the the fourth special move that Eevee teaches is called Glitzy Glow, which is the Psychic, the Espeon-inspired uh, move. It's a 90 power Psychic type move that sets up Light Screen as its secondary effect. In this case, the secondary effect isn't too important. It does help out on Jesse and James because it does limit some damage from using Sludge Bomb. Uh, you just need that psychic coverage against all the poison types. The only problem is that you would really love if Eevee still knew all five of its moves. Headbutt, Buzzy Buzz, Bouncy Bubble, and Sizzly Slide. So the idea is which one do you give up for Glitzy Glow? Uh, current routes will give up Buzzy Buzz. Yeah. Because Sizzly Slide is used on the Persian... Uh, for that effect, for the burn effect. Uh, but what you give up in Buzzy Buzz is consistency, especially on Jesse and James. Because the Arbok typically outspeeds Eevee, uh, you typically would go for Buzzy Buzz to get that Paralyze off, and then you can safely get rid of the Arbok before it can attack again. However, depending yeah. on what strat you want to do, you have to take one or the other. So in this case, uh, on drywall screen, you're gonna see no, uh, you're gonna see no sizzly slide, and you are gonna see the buzzy buzz strat. It's gonna make Jesse and James more consistent. It is safer. Uh, you might even see what I call the sack strat, which is you put a Jigglypuff or a Clefairy in your party, and you can bait the poison jab into that Pokemon turn one, and save Eevee quite a bit of HP and hassle on that fight. Uh, very consistent. I'm yeah. um, not surprised to see it during the race. But again, at that top level, like if you're going for a 304, 303, 302, 259, 
uh, you, then you need to squeeze out every bit of time save that you can. Uh, so I think a lot of our top runners won't be using that strat, but I'm not surprised that our like mid or uh, like pot three runners uh, are going for that strat. Yeah, it definitely makes Hideout a, a little more consistent uh, because both the Jesse and James fight and the Giovanni one fight are less scary with it. It also helps with the um, Radicate fight right at the beginning of Hideout because you can just use the same old strat of using Buzzy Best turn one to slow it down and then just using Headbutt to to defeat it, um, which you can't do, of course, if you taught Litsy Glow over Buzzy Buzz. Yeah, in fact, I just saw with dry, Drywall's menuing, puts Wigglytuff in the party, also has Graveler in the party as well. Um, yeah. I think he, I think this is more optimal way to do it, like, because he still, he, he, he doesn't have to use Sizzly Slide. So that's where all of those pieces lock together and say, okay, I'm using Graveler for Persian, so I don't need Sizzly Slide, so I get to keep Buzzy Buzz. So I'll do the, so I'll also grab Wigglytuff to do that sack strat all together. It's just all those puzzle pieces work together um, very, very nicely. Ooh, big Haunter on mass yeah. screen. Nice dodge. I'm always surprised how giant it is when it spawns. Yeah, it's, it's huge. Uh, Matt also got a breakout from the Ghastly. That was kind of unfortunate. But I guess he's one of those spawns that you really do want to see in tower but sometimes just doesn't show up because the uh halls are so narrow uh that's sometimes nothing spawns even with the lore uh so definitely nice to see the ghastly sad to see a breakout it has kind of a, a blow catch chance with uh, just the great bots so many runners are well up to swap the first ball to an ultra ball here whoa that was close <laughs> Very, very risky spinner passes in this race. Oh, yeah. Uh... What was I talking about? That's my train of thought. Doesn't really matter. We'll see uh, traps here going uh, into this Haunter fight. These Haunters do have Sucker Punch, which is a little bit annoying because they will always um, give you that little bit of chip damage that you don't really want to see. The first one, it doesn't really matter since you will have that free heal pad that you just will always walk across anyway. Uh, but the second one uh, that he just fought, yeah, that's always going to give you a little bit of chip right in before a pretty difficult boss battle with uh, Jesse and James 3. So yeah, I, like, I usually anyway. like to pick up the Hyper Potion if I'm minus defense because I feel yeah. like that hurts a lot for this Jesse and James 3 battle. Just that little bit of chip damage yeah. feels so bad with minus defense. It definitely does. Uh, the hyper potion is really nice to grab there. Uh, there's also a second one if you really want to make sure uh, you have enough healing uh, in hideout on the bottom floor uh, in the room where you also do the uh, rolling chair stuff. Um, so yeah, there are a couple of those items that you can grab for extra safety. It's also nice, theoretically, for Asha too, because um, they're having a have potion sometimes can make a difference. I've never seen so many ghastly spawn. <laughs> well, Matt is on a catch chain right now, at least, yeah. but uh, it is true. It's a rare Tower's, Tower's so weird because so many runners will like lure and then just not see anything. Yeah. Or you just don't lure, get a ghastly, you catch wood, and then they all will show up. <laughs> oh, we're gonna there's see. Like no, there's like no in between. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna see two Justin James fights here, side by side. Uh, Justin James uh, two, I believe. I keep forgetting what the what they're numbered. I think this is two in hideout for yeah, drywall. Yeah, two, two's and... in hideout, three is in tower, and then Hides. four is in silco. Oh, very interesting on drywall screen. It actually had that uh, that initial poison jab went into the Eevee and not the Wigglytuff. Thankfully, uh, the Sludge Bomb also did not target Eevee. Otherwise, uh, drywall might have been in some Oof. pretty serious trouble there. Speaking of trouble. Yeah, uh... there was a... Uh, was that a double target also on Matt's screen? Yeah, that's really wow. unfortunate. The notes that's unfortunate do say... 
because du double, like the double target, usually doesn't even kill Eevee, even with that yeah. chip damage. Because you do, if you use Blitzing Glow, you do set up a light screen, so the damage, uh, especially from the Weezing, is uh, much lower after that. Uh, so you can get unlucky, and uh, I definitely got unlucky here. Um, seems to be going for an yeah, impromptu Matt's drill run set here. Yeah, Matt is improvising. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, well, he might go for plus four. I'd, I'd be careful with your X attack usage mm -hmm. uh, in this case. We'll have to see what happens here. Oh. Um, I'm noticing he's misinputting. He's hitting that back button. Oh, um, no. Now, this is a third time oh, God. he's done it. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I mean, that's a, to get to the back. You know, nerves, nerves are coming in. You're trying to think of uh, what strategy you want to do here. And you just have a bunch of misinputs. Yeah. Um, and then it can be very frustrating, especially once you get one and then you force yourself into a second. Graveler also dies here, which is just another uh, animation to sit through. Kind of unfortunate. Uh, JNJ3 for Trubs. Don't want to see that, but. Yeah, made it work out. Uh, that was yeah. some good impro impro improvisation on his part to kind of recover. It's like, okay, I've got the Rhyhorn, so this might work out. Uh, that or like, you just try to revive the Eevee and, and just go for it from there. Yeah, that Jesse and James 3 tends to be a very scary fight. It is Eevee's final fight before the main switch. Um, and it, it, it's just, it's a very difficult battle because both Jesse and James Pokemon are level 32. So they're typically higher level than we are. Uh, the Eevee is like on average level 30, can be as high as 33, um, can be as low as 29. Well, uh, Matt is swapping the, oh, just using another lure here, uh, swapping the Ghastly to the front. Uh, and it's going to use that for the upcoming Snorlax fight in, uh, well, on Route 16. Cause... It's amazing. It's amazing that, like, your party is usually full of a bunch of very slow Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Between Rhyhorn and Cubone and Machop, you typically just are, like, going to be outsped by the Snorlax. So, like, only Eevee, Pikachu, or Ghastly are going to be fast enough to safely run away and ideally you want to be able to swap out the eevee or pikachu here because you're not going to be using them in battles and there is a major catching section coming up right after that snorlax fight so having them in the party is just going to mean that they're going to gain a bunch of junk levels so and, if you get the gas you always want to and like yeah. i said like 30 is like your average eevee at level 31 does learn a move it learns yeah that's helping hand, hand right yeah so you just lose an extra two seconds for hitting 31 if you still have to keep it in its party because as soon as you start this catching sequence you're almost certainly going to get at least one jump level on the eevee yeah so it uh, worked out from that here with the uh, Gassy and the, and the uh, Rhyhorn. If Rhyhorn had actually fainted on JNJ3, um, you do need to alive, not fainted Pokemon in your party to be able to use 2C strats. So we would have needed to keep one extra Pokemon here. But luckily, uh, it was the Graveler that fainted and not the Rhyhorn. So, Route 17, the old cycling road, but there's no bike in this game, now just deemed Pokemon Road. Uh, we do see our third trainer skip of the game. Uh, right you there. just hug this fence and you can avoid that trainer. It is the easiest one. Yes. Uh, you just have to really just make sure you hug the fence. Um, yeah. That one, like the one time you don't hug the fence and you hit him, you're just like, oh man. He has two Psyducks. And uh, again, you don't have a main Pokemon right now, so it actually can be quite troublesome. Yeah, Ghastly would have a rough time with that. Speaking of Psyduck, uh, nice catch here for Matt. Uh, ideally, you want to see a uh, Doe Duo here as soon as possible because you want that to evolve in time for uh, the blue fight, which can be tough if you catch it last on Route 17. I've definitely had situations where it was very, very close. It only evolved on like Erica or something. Uh, 
but with the way that the catch route is working out, I should be fine to even be caught last and still live off in time. In fact, getting the Psyduck and the Ghastly for Matt uh, really justifies him not evolving Machoke, Kingler, and Marowak. So yeah. it really, really worked out in his favor. I believe he doesn't even have to catch uh, Tenta. No, he's got it marked right now, so he will have to still catch Tentacool, which is like the one I would I would highly recommend that uh, people avoid. Tentacool can just be um, particularly annoying. Ooh, this is really nope. bad for Bony, no bird. So he's Yeah, he's at the bottom of the route. And again, he needs them both. So again, like if he would have evolved those Pokemon, so already it's kind of returning. If he would have evolved at least two of those three aforementioned things, uh, he could leave without Doduo. Uh, it's not as safe. Okay, that's the pony. But he at least gets the pony, which of course oh. is mandatory. That or accidentally, uh, accidentally dismissed the support trainer there. But yeah, the ponies are you really need because that's going to be the new Riot Pokemon, which is the fastest Riot Pokemon you can get in the game. Uh, the Rapid Ash, that is the evolution. Um, so, yeah, Matt really had to wait around for that. Uh, could opt to s just leave now uh, and not catch the Dodo, but yeah, then the catch is going to be a little bit tricky. So, so just kind of looking and and using my own experience in the game right now, he does not have uh, Nine Tails marked as a potential. Ah, yeah. So, but that is easy to be able to fix. You just grab the Firestone and Mansion, and then there's one Pokemon. If he gets rid of Doduo and Dodrio, he just needs Nine Tails and one other thing. Now, that one other thing might have to be Magmar or uh, or Tangela or Ditto, or Chansey, or just like whatever yeah. the next thing he sees is. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, he can't, uh, he doesn't have the the YOLO option, which is the post Erica catch. Um, uh, you just run past Route 7 one last time, uh, where you can see a full Pix or a Jigglypuff or an Abra, but he has all three of those. So that's victory not even bell. an option. Yeah, Victory Bell is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because of all people, King Trubs has caught Victory Bell in runs three different times. <laughs> now I want to see it. Where, where He's the catch that? and is the only person who I've ever known to actually catch a Victory Bell. Um, it is something where I, I think it was actually Aspect who was like putting our trackers together. And I was like, hey, you kind of have to put Victory Bell and Vileplume. They are 1% one per one spawns on Route 21 Grass, but is an option. So if he does not catch Doduo sure. or Dodrio... Uh, oh, there it, it is. We, oh, there it is. Okay, so all that discussion we just had, but thankfully, nothing. will not have to take place. Yeah, yeah. That was really huge to show off, uh, because Matt did pass by the Route 16 Dodo that um, did spawn. Could have cut down the bush on Route 16 and caught the Dodo there. But doesn't matter. Got it yeah. now. Not recommended. The cut push is kind of slow. It is kind of slow, yes. If a second thing had maybe spawned um, there, though, um, I don't think that Ponyta or something can spawn there. If uh, Matt still did the Pidgey or uh, the rat uh, and had seen that on the other side of the bush, I do think it would have been worth it to go for it. But yeah, that's, uh, that concludes Route 17 here. For Matt is going to enter uh, Fuchsia now, but it's still not time to tackle the gyms. Instead, uh, we're just going to see them pick up the surf equivalent of Sea Skin here. But before that, yeah, that's like I love, a I love, cut route, I love having such a high catch count uh, going into kind of the early game. Because if you, and this and this happened in, in our practice race yesterday, uh, I think I exited Rock Tunnel, or not? Yeah, Rock Tunnel with like 34 or 35 Pokemon. Oh no! And you're just like super. Oh, I see it. I see the optional on drywall screen. That was such a slow walk too. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a bunch of gaslies, I'm sure. Two of them. Two, yeah, probably. But if you have such a high catch count through the mid game, you basically cash in on Route 17. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, I will catch Ponyta, Ponyta. <laughs> and 
and do duo if it shows up. If not, you just run straight down the route. Yeah, it's a really, it's a great feeling. Uh, it is. E e <laughs> it's a, it's incredible how fast because I think the C skim split ends up being like on average like an eight minute split, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden you get like a five minute split and you're just like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just three minutes of time save. It just you cash in. Yeah, uh, yeah. your high catch count there. Uh, nice. Matt does have like a perfectly average C skim count at 40. Uh, if you're 42 to 44, you are usually also primed to cash in by not catching Tentacool. You mm -hmm. might not even have to catch uh, Coffee either. Yeah. And you can just full, absolutely fly through these parts of the game. Yeah, that's just um, three catches. We will be seeing. <laughs> He had a. There we go. He had a uh, not a victory bell, just a weeping bell to spawn. <laughs> I was really hoping to see a victory bell. Okay, so Tentacool is kind of notoriously like one of the worst, quote unquote, consistent catches of the game. Okay. Because on on water you cannot summon the second controller. So the idea is, okay, do I use a silver raspberry to increase oh, no. its catch rate? but it is hard to hit the circle, or do you use a Nana Berry to keep it in place? Okay. All right, he's gotten, much, he's gotten a much more friendly pattern here to, and yeah, a great throw. This should be just fine. Yeah. Still not guaranteed, probably like 75 to 80%. Okay. Does get it. So yeah, you can also choose to Nana up the tentacle if you want to stop it from moving, but that will make the catch itself way less consistent. So a lot of runners will pick up the silver raspberries on Route 17 to, um, yeah, mostly for this specific catch. Okay, has to backtrack all the way for the star you. Oh, got, got trapped right against the wall. <laughs> Unfortunate. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 I don't hate catching the star you, even though it was way back at the top yeah. of the route. You see one, you catch one. Uh, our CP is... 1101. Ooh, 1101. That's an amazing Sayu. That's, that's tied it's... for the second highest we've seen this tournament. Yeah, I can, and, up to that. And getting those silver raspberries can also double for Staryu. Staryu jumps, but it doesn't at least move side to side. Can make for a really easy catch. If you silver, if you silver raz and get an excellent, it is guaranteed. Can save a lot of headaches on this route, even if it's just Staryu to just get that one silver raz. Yeah, this, this. Oh no! Look at look at drywall. He's he's got it. No, no. <laughs> he's got a ghastly on screen, but it was on the other side of a spinner. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Oh no. So it was just kind of itch, and then a gold bat was also in that corner. Very very awkward, but it did manage to get it done. All right. So. Wow, Matt Matt being very safe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you do you not need to go that yeah. far to the right because that one trainer that you're skipping uh, actually does not look to the right. So as long as you, um, even if you're just like one tile to the right, you are actually just fine. Very safe. Yeah. He's got uh, his options of coffees to <laughs> choose from here. Yeah. And that uh, basically concludes the catch route for uh, fucking traps here. Oh no, <laughs> this could break out. Yeah. Actually. And this is why and this is why I love Nana Berry and the coffee. It's actually a pretty easy catch rate. Um, and yeah, not even hitting the circle is like totally fine, especially with the ultra balls. Some sometimes you want to go fast, you just yolo throw it to the right, especially if you know it's gonna start to spin that way. Yeah. Uh, but that uh, is all the catches, so Matt is finished. Yes. Yeah, big big haunter in the way for drywall as well. Very annoying spot. Uh, let's go to the menu here now. Let's see the stats. Oh, that's actually not that that's, great speed. Uh, yeah, that that's uh, that speed's a little rough. Uh, it's at least the uh, the special attack's actually quite high. Yeah, as long as you outspeed everything on. Oh, this is rough. Uh, as long as you outspeed everything on uh, the lane fight, and Wait, also don't get outsped by by rapid force Pidgeot, speed doesn't really matter. But if you have that bad of a speed stat. I'm not, then you can I'm, lose not some time. I'm not worried about the rival fight. I think you have to have minimum. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah that should be I fine. Think you, I think he's going to be outsped by, by Rapid Ash. Uh, Rapid Ash. Yeah. Um, I wasn't paying attention super closely. Uh, if you have 90 speed uh, at 46 as Staryu, 
uh, that is just good enough. That translates to 118 speed. Uh, but here we have 115 speed. So he's he's split the two speed thresholds for Blaine. Rapidash has 117, but Ninetales has 113. Uh, which is, if you're 113, you are absolutely minimum, and that's with the 3 plus 1 candy route, uh, which has been very, very popular. Yeah. Uh, you could go 2 plus 2, but 3 plus 1 helps out bad Starmies so much. It's super good. It's just such a good strat. I uh, just wanted to chime in again about our uh, other race of the day that has just concluded with a very, very close finish. Uh, Jim B coming in at 3.30.04 with Phoenix Mania just behind at 3.30.39. Wow! So that was a very, very close, close finale here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that race is over now. Uh, well, we see Dry Wally now on Justin James 3 here. Indeed, in a very... Very classic, but also very safe, uh, utilizing Buzzy Buzz to get the paralysis on the Arbok, guaranteed that you outspeed out, uh, out it next turn, uh, which does completely prevent what we call getting quad targeted, um, which is where the Hyper Potion can come in. But basically, if the Arbok and the Weezing target EV both turns uh, in the other strat, in the uh, non-Buzzy Buzz strat, uh, the EV almost certainly will be KO'd. <laughs> Almost had a very clever idea to skip the second X special attack and just use Bone Club, but unfortunately Bone <laughs> Club is not 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 quite powerful enough to no, not quite. Reason. Would have probably needed to learn uh Bomb Ring there. To actually make a difference. Yeah, Bone Ring basically just earthquake. Uh, yeah. ninety percent earthquake. And gets around sturdy, not that that matters in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, um, Matt's just about done with the uh, mansion section. We'll have to go down to the basement to pick up the secret key, which is, you know, the item that you actually go d into mansion in the first place, because you need that to access Blaine's gym. And Drywall will be coming up on the Route 17 catching section pretty soon here uh, on the other screen. I actually didn't see how the Tad fight went for uh, for traps. Uh, I didn't either. I assume that uh, he went safe and had the Doduo or Dodrio right, yeah. uh, in the second slot to bait the Thunderbolt into that slot. Because I saw the Could coughing we... uh, sent out against the Max, so I assume okay, that's... Yeah. Yeah, that was gonna. Yeah, Ted. Ted shot. is such a such a headache part of the run because you go from the Jesse and James fight, which is level thirty two, mm -hmm. to the <laughs> sniped by a rat at the last second. Uh, you go from that Jesse and James fight at level thirty two, and Ted has a level forty five electrode, and it's immediately after you get your Starmie. So he's already super effective. He's faster than you as well. Thunderbolt is just a big problem. So the idea is to send in a like either Psyduck or Do Duo that will be yeah. KO'd and it will see that it gets a KO with Thunderbolt and go uh, for that instead of the more important Starmie. Yeah. Top end runners will just try to minimize their party flopping uh, and will keep Rapid Ash there and just hope that uh, the Thunderbolt does go into Rapid Ash and not Starmie and or just doesn't get paralyzed uh, if it does go into Starmie. Because in, in the case of um, Thunderbolt going into Rapid Dash, if you use that strat, you can just skip the bad heal, whereas you will always have to go for the bad heal to get the Dodrio back uh, to life. Right. If you want to use it for blue. Uh, yeah, so yeah. we go into the uh, Blaine fight here with a little bit of an easy quiz. <laughs> uh, the, gold, like, the gold standard for Blaine is to like get a sub two Blaine. Uh, for like top end runs uh, for runners going for like 301 pace or better uh, like to finish Blaine at about the two hour mark 
Uh, obviously, that's not very common. Uh, we're not going to see that a whole lot even in the tournament. Uh, Drywall does get the skip, but I think forgot that Rhyhorn needed to be mount. Oh, no, actually, I don't hate that. Oh, Ooh, God. Watch that out, watch out, cause... watch out, buddy. Oof. Ooh, that watch out, finish. buddy. <laughs> Just go right down the middle, you're good. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, those those three those three uh, NPCs are trainers. Uh, it is very easy. They have very little vision, um, and it's and it's, it's easy fun. to dodge them. You just run straight down the middle. Uh, but Drywall do is set up has the Psyduck, the Ponyta, and the Do Duo on screen. You just have to be a little careful because you want to stay in the grass in that first patch of grass uh, because there is a War Turtle trainer. Uh, on the right side. Again, we don't have a main Pokemon right now. Everything is posited, uh, so it's really important to dodge uh, all the optional trainers on this route, and especially Route 21, when you can't even summon the second controller for help. Yeah, uh, Sammy just got hit by Flablets uh, out of Rapid Ash, so did not outspeed the Rapid Ash. And thankfully did not burn, because Flare Blitz does have yeah. that 10% chance to burn as well. Let's see if uh, Sarmi does our speed tonight. Because I didn't catch the speed at 46. That's our speed. Okay. Uh, at yeah, least it was one one, speed 115 speed. Split him okay. right down the middle. Great. Okay. So just good enough. If you get outsped by both, it can actually be a little bit dangerous. Uh, especially if the Sarmi ha uh, has low special defense. Or defense just for the Flabbit Blitz damage. But uh, worked out just fine. And should hopefully have enough speed uh, for the rival five fights after well it's still a little ways away but you do want to definitely outspeed the Pidgeot on that as well so with playing finish the first gym since Misty uh, <laughs> this now is just going to be a little bit of a, of a gym roundup with uh, Serge and Erica who are both early to mid game gym leaders. So, Sarmi is going to be way over leveled for that. It's going to have a very easy time just spamming its very strong moves in squad and psychic and not really having to care about setup or uh, type effectiveness. Yeah, like in, like in Scarlet and Violet, you can almost fight the gym leaders in every order, but they do yeah. not scale to what order that exactly. you fight them in. They are just static. Um, so yeah, so while Surge is supposed to be third, we fight him fourth. While Blaine is supposed to be seventh, we fight him third. Uh, very convenient that we pick up the Starmie and the our water type coverage is just perfect for the city that we find ourselves in. And then yeah. while both Surge and Erica are super effective against us, we are massively overleveled and don't even need any setup uh, at all. Uh, we'd like to welcome in our viewers from across the world that just uh, was watching the first race of the day over on PSR TV One. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm T Pat, and Triv is with me on commentary. You're watching a match between King Trubs and Drywall getting into the late game stages. Uh, to recap, uh, Matt himself had a very low catch count early and then a very high catch count through the mid game. Uh, and actually opted to not evolve Machoke, Kingler, or Marowak, and instead did catch Ghastly and Psyduck and Tentacool late, uh, and has already caught a very powerful Staryu at an 1101 CP. Its speed is a little bit low, but its special attack is very high. Uh, meanwhile, Drywall actually having a very solid run uh, for a pot free runner. Um, just very consistent um, and just had very good Jesse James fights, did all the very safe strats, and is having a very good Route 17 right now. Uh, so even he's on for a very decent run, uh, even though the match is a little bit uh, lopsided at the moment. So yeah, welcome in everybody, and congratulations to Aspect with his win with a 307 today. Yeah, um, welcome everybody. <laughs> uh... We're just gonna see King Traps here going for the Erica fight next. Uh, like I said, it's just gonna be uh, the roundup of the mid game gym battles where Drywall is on Route 17 right now. Very, very important catching section 
um, did get a couple of great spawns right off the bat. Uh, I saw the Ponytail, the Psyduck, and I think also the Doduo spawn uh, right at the top of the route. So that's going to be very, very good for him. It's, yeah, already up to above the Ponytail into Rapidash, which is always a good call since the movement speed increase is very valuable. Now depositing some of the other already fully evolved Pokemon. Uh, probably yeah, we, haven't, we haven't seen haven't seen too many memes, but it was very it got interesting for a moment where uh, where Trubs for one moment did not have a Do Duo and may have had to catch a Victory Bell, <laughs> uh, which would have been very funny if Matt of all people would once again go for Victory Bell. Uh, yeah. Drywall taking it very cautiously down the route. I don't. I don't blame him. I don't think he has anything left to catch. Uh, oh yeah, just a little, a little unsure of where all the trainers are. Just picking up a super repel. <laughs> saw saw item ball. Pick it up. I understand right, the info here. Uh, both trainers, uh, both trainers did fail the vermilion skip. Uh, I believe they failed it on no, the same side. Drywall actually didn't. Oh yeah, Drywall did. Drywall uh, since, you know, you're right. Matt failed the Vermilion skip. Drywall failed Route 25 skip and hit an extra trainer in Tower up to yes. this point. Um, but yeah, very solid run from uh, even Drywall, who has 44 Pokemon heading into Sea Skim, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's um, in fact custom. only has to catch Staryu. Hopefully, uh, he recognizes this because his tracker is a little bit funky right now. He has Tentacool marked, but Staryu not marked. Uh, so hopefully recognizes that Staryu is the final catch for him because everything else is uh, set. Because 40, 44 is effectively maximum uh, for a C-Skim catch count. Yeah. Actually, that means that. Wait, let's see. It's one over in terms of planned Pokemon right now, right? Uh, Drywall is. Because he has Tentacruel, but not Tentacruel marked. Uh, so I could just. Oh, yeah. Push over. Um, yeah, a, li a little funky. Because, yeah, if he if he unmarks Tentacruel and goes for a Staryu Starmie, it does go to 51. Um, so he could opt to just deposit Marowak, or deposit the cubo before it evolves. Yeah. To save himself 30 seconds. Or the, the Psyduck. Well, we're gonna see what Stella chooses to do here, just entering it, the water. It, it does get a little bit funky when you do get into those situations, um, especially when you have an extremely, like, a, an almost overly high catch count. Uh, let's see what like, we get. Oh, what do I not evolve? All right, let's see what we got for Staryu. 1042. Uh, 1042, a bit on the low side. Yeah, slightly, slightly below average, but still should be decent. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah, keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> believe when it comes to the CP, because again, it's a Com combat power is just a it's like a made up number <laughs> it feels like because it just adds all of your stat values together multiplies it by your level i think you, it divides by six or something and then it says here's your combat power um so you could have really high attack and defense and speed and really low of your other stats and yeah. it might look average uh for star you i think the minimum maximum values end up being about 950 to 1150 and that's like literally minimum and maximum. So 1062 is like the exact statistical average of a star UCP. So 1042, a little bit below. Uh, anything above 1100 is quite good, or at least you're more likely to be good, uh, though yeah. not guaranteed, as we saw uh, very low speed from Trub's star you. Uh, ended up getting outsped by the Rapidash. Uh, Drywall needs to be a little bit careful here because Oof, that, was just... that that exact Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Okay. Right that there. Was the one. Right there, buddy. Yeah. 
Yeah, once, once I saw a lot of the left-right movement, I started getting very nervous because uh, these Route 21 trainers are extremely dangerous. They do have pretty high-level Pokemon. And again, you're not... You don't really have your main yet. Um, looks like Drywall is going to start to do the party managing to uh, right yeah. uh, get there. I think he's going to end up with 51 Pokemon because yeah, Psyduck second. is still in the party. Uh, again, just kind of a be like a beginner, uh, beginner thing to... Um, try to optimize for future. Oh, runs. this is great. This is an amazing. Oh, star. wow. Wow. This star you is so good for a 1042. You really love to see it. Doesn't even have to go for the 3 plus 1 candy strat. Couldn't even because uh, he skipped the tower candy because the uh, um, Ghastly just spawned right in front of it. In the and way. The path. Oh, that's such a bummer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, not quite natured either, so. <laughs> Uh, definitely has a one-up on maybe some runners in this tournament. But yeah, that's great to see because 1042 has got to be one of the lowest CPs we've seen in the tournament. And this star is actually quite good. So Actually better than uh, Matt's star with 60 less CP. So that just gets to show how... We, we just know that there's a trade-off somewhere. So yes. it might be in like one of the defense stats. Yeah, uh, which just won't come into play until later. So like if you're minus special defense... Uh, it can be a little bit scary for, say, Champion or Lance. Yeah. If you're minus defense, it's scary for uh, scary for Agatha. But it's only, like, a couple fights, whereas the special attack and the speed stack can be taken advantage of uh, always. Ideally, ideally, this time it just has zero IV in the attack or something, and that's where... Uh, and that's where the, yeah, low number the comes CP from, yeah. drop comes from. Yeah, taking it very safe. It was really hugging those rocks. Don't right. hate it. So, uh, Traps just defeated Blue and is now coming up on the west side of the game. The Archer Double Battle. Would you like to explain why Archer Double is so bad? I can definitely do that. Uh, I could probably rant about this fight for hours, but I'm just going to keep it short since <laughs> the fight itself should only take like three minutes. So this is a true double battle. Uh, meaning that you don't actually control both Pokemon on, on your side. The second Pokemon is also controlled by an AI, namely by the rival Trace. Um, so not only does this fight have very high like variability, it's not very consistent, but also because the game has to process three different AI trainers, this fight lags a lot, like 10 seconds at least per turn. So if you get a bad fight, if something goes wrong, it costs you so much time. It's super annoying. It has ended many a PP pace run. So um, like any Scarlet Violet fight, right? It, <laughs> sure. Right? Yeah. Um, I actually didn't see what opening uh, Traps got here. Uh, looks like he got the, the Thunderbolt No Protect, uh, which is kind of like yeah. the... I, I call this the etiquette approved uh, start. As long as you don't get uh, paralyzed, the Electro will favor self-destruct, which does yeah. uh, hit Raticate, and Cubone favors Boomerang, which then gets rid of the Raticate. Yes. Uh, the Cubone likes to actually target the Electrode with Boomerang, but since the Electro goes away, the attack goes where you want it to and into that uh, Raticate. So now you just don't get hit with Sucker Punch for the rest of the fight. Uh, yeah. and turns into a very clean four turn. Obviously, it has to start in that way, and you need to not get paralyzed. So, yeah. But it has been this... more consistent than not, because for yeah. whatever reason, the Cubo does not like to boomerang or even target the uh, Raticate when it mm -hmm. is just on the field hitting you with the uh, Sucker Punches. But in that version of the fight, you get... It's more consistent than not that you do see the self-destruct boomerang and then the eradicate is disposed of. So a very I clean four-turn fight. Uh, this is like the cleanest that you can get uh, out of a four-turn. So very, very good archer fight for traps. It's actually the same exact same fight that I got on my in my tournament race. Very, very nice. Uh, the only better opening that you can get is if um, Electro goes for self-destruct turn one. And Mac doesn't go for protect. That's the only way you can actually get a three turn on this Archer Double Battle. Um, but this standable and then, opening. And then it's unlikely to even yeah, get it is a unlikely. three turn because you do need, in that case, you absolutely need the um, the Q Bone to just go for Bone Meringue two times and hit 
because it will yeah. hit the Raticate, and you can get a three turn. Uh, but if you don't get that, uh, you will get at minimum. Oh no! Turn. Oh no! Drywall, uh, not realizing that you cannot skip uh, that trainer. Uh, by dodging their vision. Their vision goes all the way across the wall. Yeah, unfortunate. Also, they used to revive on Doduo instead of taking the bad heal. That is really unfortunate. Uh, uh, hopefully he realizes that he should summon the second controller here because you're yeah, in oh. effectively the same situation as you are uh, a Light stream. Yeah, and, and that's why I usually want to... Oh, oh, going... oh okay. Oh, no. Wow. That's rough. Uh, Ooh, that Thunderbolt did a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's recoverable. I think he's just going to need to take the white. Uh, I know, I think he can. Luckily, he will just be able to fly back to... Um, I think he'll be able to fly back. Oh, maybe Honestly, Rapid Ash can. Yeah. Maybe he can power this out. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, and he got it with the burn damage. Yeah. Really unfortunate option to hit, but... Uh... Also, uh, I'm seeing a juggler on Matt's screen. That's also an optional, right? Oh yeah, where did that come from? Uh, went to the wrong floor, maybe? I was so preoccupied with the other optional on Drywall's screen that I didn't actually see what Matt did. <laughs> What's very nice is Drywall just gets a free heal. Yeah. The bed is right there. That's such an unfortunate optional to hit. Yeah, I've, I've hit... I've hit the optional that Drywall's hit. You have to treat it just like Ted. So you just yeah. summon the second controller. And hopefully you don't you do have like a do duo oh, yeah. to work with. Looks like uh Oh, he just like I wonder if Matt just spaced out and just didn't hit that teleporter. Because yeah. it looks like he just ran straight to the right. Looks like it's uh, pretty and, unfortunate. Like, missed the teleporter. That that seems like a very it's so hard that it feels like a very distracted play. Like you were just holding right uh, and just weren't looking. And this is especially annoying because, um, well, Matt just got the free heal after the Archer battle, but now already lost some PP after that to this uh, optional battle. So I don't I actually didn't see which moves um, Matt chose, but. It should it shouldn't matter too much because yeah. you're gonna elixir. Well, the elixir is a big point of contention right now. <laughs> uh, the earliest you can elixir is when I like to do it, which is after That's Sabrina, Sabrina and before yeah. the Koga Gym. I think most people will probably opt to uh, elixir after Caden, just to be a little extra safe. Um, but you can also hold that elixir off until uh, after or during the Giovanni fight, as in yeah. the uh, gym leader Giovanni fight, Geo three. Uh, it all just depends yeah. on your psychic PP, but in this section of the game, there's not a whole... You don't really use psychic a whole lot except on this Jesse and James fight. It's just two clicks. You don't even use it on uh, Sabrina at all. Uh, and then it's just the Koga Jib is where most of that usage is going to come from, especially with the protects that can eat a lot of those uh, psychic usages. Uh, it also depends on your uh, star's stats. I think uh, Matt might be in an okay spot because if we remember his special attack is very high, so he has a better yeah. chance to just use Scald on the upcoming Weezings and uh, Venomoth that is on Koga. So that might help him out. I'm not too worried about the PP lost or the move usage loss on the one uh, optional. Uh <laughs> Matt also went to the Justin James 4 fight there with Rapid Ash and Got Sludge Bomb poisoned. Uh, but on the Rapidash. So. Yeah, that's a, that's a rare sight, though, apparently. Uh, yeah, that's, that is weird, because typically you see Thunderbolt from yeah. Louisiana. Well, usually you would have Dojo uh, in Slot 2 for this fight. So um, if the Weezing attack or focuses the Starmie or the Dojo, Drio would, would always go for Thunderbolt, because it's the highest possible damage. Uh, but if it ta uh, targets the Rapidash, then yeah, maybe Slash Bomb just does more because it's the uh, same type of attack bonus, right? Yeah, very interesting. Um, I could, and again, like if you use if you use Rapidash in this section, you have to hit a fire, uh, fire Blast on blue. But if you do have Rapidash in slot two for Jesse and James, you can go for a Stomp Flinch 
um, Louisian, which is obviously not a bad call to go for. Uh, yeah. If you get it, you just don't get attacked, and then you never have to worry about the Thunderbolt in the first place. So, nice little, nice little, like, small advantage of going for a risky strat. Yeah, so Drywall is just going to go through hopefully a pretty easy section of the uh, Surge and Erica fights before uh, tackling Sylvko. Uh, meanwhile, Matt has the uh, Sabrina Gym in the final shop of the game. He'll pick up the last two, um, the last two gift Pokemon again very fast because you don't have a catch animation or level up animations on them. So even the Lapras like going to this extra floor in Sylvko is still outright faster than most every Pokemon that you would catch in the game. That plus there's a rare candy there. I kept thinking like, oh, I have an extra rare candy and an extra poke. I can just skip that room. It still ends up just a little bit faster to just go to the room uh, and get Lapras. Yeah, these gift Pokemon are generally always worth it because they're so quick to get, even with the uh, like elevator that you have to go th through to reach the Lapras. Uh, one bit of tech that we're going to see, and we actually been seeing this on the elevators, but we also see it on the teleporter tech pads, is that your character, in order to walk into a teleporter or walk into an elevator, may have to shuffle their feet. Uh, you don't see that on Matt's screen now because he actually did it well. If you are angled basically perfectly towards like the point of attack, like the center of a teleporter, uh, your character will just simply walk on to the teleporter or just walk into the elevator. Otherwise, they have to do this little feet shuffle in order to do that. And you lose about a second or so for each time. But of course, Sabrina's gym is a all teleporter puzzle gym. So trying to optimize as many of those as possible is going to be very important for uh, runners to shave off a couple seconds from their time. Wow, oh, Matt now picking up catch number 50, so the catch route is done. We'll be able to get uh, into Kogos Gym, if we count it correctly. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking to see if there's anything like any interesting quirks uh, with Matt's catch route. Uh, again, he got uh, he got rare char immediately in Rock Tunnel, if you remember yeah. that. It was literally Best the spawn. first spawn. Um, but I think the weirdest thing that we saw was he opted to deposit the Machop, the Cubone, and the Krabby. So he did not do any four-level evolutions, um, which I, I I personally felt was a little scary to drop those three extra catches mm -hmm. uh, and then still have to go for Ghastly and Psyduck in the late game. It would have been hilarious if he, if he caught Victory Bell, though. That would uh, meanwhile, for Drywall, uh, Drywall has a very normal catch route. Like, I feel that he's done, like, everything normal, like, everything yeah. correct. Uh, waited for all the correct spawns to to pop up on every route. Um, he got one bonus. Uh, where he got two bonuses. He got Ekans, and then he got Krabby on Route 10. Uh, so was able to skip the Tentacool and also skip Evolving Ninetales as well, uh, which is very nice. But a very normal catch route. And you love to see that, especially again, out of uh, beginner runners, like anything that is very normal just makes you more comfortable and comfort level is so huge in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Matt doing pretty good on his teleporters. I'm noticing he's hitting a lot of these pretty square. All right, here we got the, these last two spinners in the gym, which is, I feel like if you have to wait for this spinner, then this one, the last one, you can pass him to the left, uh, which he does exactly. Uh, if you don't have to wait for that last, or the medium spinner, um, then I think I, you could pass the last spinner uh, above him or to the right. Uh, it's just that all the spinners are on a weird, like, local cycle. Um, but depending on how your teleporters go can change kind of the timing of 
how they go. Because every time you interact with something in the overworld, it does pause, like, the spinner cycles. Uh, so sometimes if they're, like, mid-feet shuffle, they have to, like, still shuffle their feet when you come back. And that can interrupt that local cycle. So we, here we have uh, Trubs on the Sabrina fight. Uh, the only variance that we have here is when you get Light Screen. Typically you get uh, turn one, as you see here. So he will fully set up and then two shot the Mime, which is when the Light Screen will drop. Uh, if you get it turn two, you have to burn an extra turn. So you typically will see players heal. Uh, but if you don't get Light Screen on the first two turns, that is what is deemed Light Screen Skip. Because then you can one shot the Mr. Mime and then you don't even have to X speed on the Alakazam. It's the only thing that would outspeed you. Uh, so you would get hit by like a Nightshade, but usually you would live it anyways. Uh, and you are able to uh, handle the fight that way. Drywall, not 100% uh, confident with the uh, maze in Erica's gym, but did get through it just fine. It's actually uh, kind of funny. When I was at GDQ, it was Shen and Raph uh, wanted me to coach them simultaneously in the practice room. And uh, Erica's gym was just, which way do I go? Because it is, like, truly a maze. Uh, and it doesn't match, any, like, any other Gen 1 game. It doesn't match, like, how the like the original layout is, or in Gen 2, or even in Fire and Leaf Green, or Heart Mix and Silver. Like, the puzzle is just completely different and completely new. Yeah. But, you know, once you memorize the layout, it's pretty, it happens pretty automatic. Uh, going yeah, I feel there. like once you get it once, you're just like, oh, yeah. okay, I see how it is. That's how that works. Um, I just wanted to point out right now on, on Drywall's tracker, uh, he unmarked Porygon, so that seems to be the catch that he will not go for. I do think that skipping Lapras would be faster, but since Drywall doesn't eat the candy in the Lapras room, um, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just one of been... those things where it's like, oh, I'm actually one over. I guess I'll skip Porygon. Which is fine. Yeah. Like, that's the correct one to skip in this case. But you'd rather have one over than one under. Uh, a couple of the backups that um, that people were thinking about, especially for this tournament, is like, what if you're really just at 49? Or, or even 48? Um, you do get a Master yeah. Ball from Giovanni, or not Giovanni, but from the Silco President. Hmm? Uh, he does give you a Master Ball, so you do have a free catch if you need something. Uh, the idea is, like, if you get kicked, like, if you go into Koga's gym and you do get kicked because you did miss Mark, and you have 49, mm -hmm. you can just head right over to Route 15. Uh, yeah. Typically, most runners won't have a Venonat caught yet. Uh, yeah. But Venonat and Venomoth and even Tauros and Pinsir Scyther can spawn there. So you typically will see something pretty quickly. You can just Imagine. Like a master uh, ball on Imagine being shot one catch for Koga, going to Route 15 and just getting a Scyther or Pinsir spawn. <laughs> Just, just immediately. Oh. It's funny, my, my AOP best time uh gets a pin or gets a pincer immediately. It is it is in like the first reset of the route that it spawned. And I actually lose time to not having Tauros. I saw three ah. pincers before one Tauros. It was ah, really sad. sad. Yeah. Uh, the other backup that players can do is if you go to the copycat house in Saffron, uh, you can pick up an extra Moonstone there. Yeah. And typically, if you still if you still have a Clefairy or a Jigglypuff or one of the Nidorans that are not evolved, uh, you can just in the menu before flying to Koga, uh, you can just use that Moonstone to get an extra Pokemon. I love yeah, that. Uh, good one of my up. first runs de-rusting. It was even for the tournament. It was just for a marathon run. Uh, I was just outright two Pokemon short. So I actually had to do both backups. I had to Master Ball something and do an extra Moonstone. Yeah, ideally, you never want to be in, the, in this position, but uh, you can't always uh, guarantee that you get all the catches during the run. Especially because, you know, uh, more advanced runners will not really want to wait around on the routes for things to spawn and 
and such as move on and sometimes that can lead in situations where uh yeah you just shot that one catcher or two catches i know you strums even... had a actually had a very clean uh kaden fight yeah uh kaden can go badly because unlike uh koga his muck knows the move minimize and if you ever see minimize that's just how you know the fight can go bad uh but looks like he had a very standard like turn one protect and then KO the next two Pokemon in the next two turns. So, very clean Caden. You love to see that. Uh, Koga's just big deal. He doesn't have Minimize. He just has Toxic and Protect on every... In fact, every Pokemon in this gym on every trainer has Toxic and Protect. Uh, so, the whole gimmick of this gym. He'll go for very Protect nice. on, like, everything if he wants to. Um, what is weird is that the Weezy does have Self-Destruct. Uh, if you do see Self-Destruct good. turn one, you do save a turn... Uh, and usually more because while Koga doesn't have perfect kill AI, he is a bit more favored to try to attack you uh, instead of protect if you are at that low health. But yeah, that's uh, here like... we are seeing Scalds from the uh, from Matt because Scald can kill both the Weezing and the Venomoth because his special attack is very high. And now it's just a matter of how many more protects you see. That's one more right there. Well, uh, dry wall now. <laughs> yeah, dry wall now coming up on the Archer Double Battle in Sufco. So let's hope that also goes well for him. We never like to see a super dirty, rough Archer fight. Uh, that can really stretch. Uh, I've had like eight turn Archers or something when it went really poorly and it just takes forever. You hate to see it. Let's see so what we Matt get here. A, uh, Matt had a 10 turn Koga's Gym, which is fair. Yeah. Like nine is actually pretty good. Um, he did not get he did not get protect from either the Beedrill uh, or the or uh, Koga's Muck, uh, which is fine. You can basically yeah. just cash in those two turns save uh, and got a nice protect on just his setup turns. Um, so that pretty clean Koga's Gym. I think uh, Matt will be happy about that. Let's see what we get. Turn one, the all important turn one on the Archer double. After this lag. <laughs> yeah, just a couple seconds. Protects after strike uh, is the worst uh, opening, in my opinion. This, yeah, I think this is the worst opening. Uh, I would say second worst, getting paralyzed, Thunderbolt paralyzed is the worst yeah. opening. <laughs> and apparently you can also get Thunderbolt protect. Uh, I've never seen that happen on my screen or on anyone's. Uh, but apparently it can uh, happen. Uh, and can that happen. It's bad, so but... you do have to dispose of the muck for the same reason as Caden is bad. It has minimized, so you have to ignore everything else on the field. The muck is the most important thing to get rid of. You cannot let it use minimize. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is that Archer's Weezing and Golbat do know dark type moves. They know dark pulse and crunch. Um, so it can get a little bit messy. Yeah, uh, hopefully we do see a Bodorank from the... Uh, from the Cubone here. Uh, should be decently favored with both Weezing and Raticate on the field. Um, but Drywall's gonna have to heal, especially after yeah. definitely getting Sucker Punch there. Uh, he'll definitely die on the next turn. This is where a uh, Hyper Potion would come in really handy. Yeah, so this is gonna be a decently scary turn. He will likely get hit with Crunch from the Golbat, which is a move that can drop your defense. Uh, he won't get hit with Sucker Punch this turn because it is ineffective unless you are attacking. Oh, that's he got a quick, quick attack. He got a quick attack. Oh, no, that's so unfortunate. The Cubone did Bone Meringue the Raticate, but missed. 90% uh, wow. accuracy move, so that's Let's really unfortunate. Hopefully he's going to try again and have the same uh, AI thought because it might save him a turn here. Goes for uh, headbutt, instead, of goes for headbutt, so this was Tragic. a... I, I believe a six turn uh, archer double, which is uh, a little sad. It could have yeah. went worse. You don't want to see it. It's... It definitely, it, it, it can always go worse on archer. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, but uh, six turn. That's, is... so, that's so sad because he did get the bone meringue. He got the double bone yeah. meringue, but it missed once. See, that's the thing. Even if Chase does cooperate and goes for bone meringue on Radicate, it can still sometimes miss. If only the um, Cubone 
was actually evolved, which it could be at that level. Because I feel like then yeah. headbutt would just be enough, like two headbutts would be enough and you, and you wouldn't have to count on the boomerang. So I think I saw this in the uh, in the tournament discord. I think, I think it was Headstrong who had probably one of the most cursed. Yeah, I saw that cursed. last uh ever like archer doubled i don't i couldn't even tell you how many turns it was uh it was but rival terrible. ran out of pokemon he has four pokemon in that fight and he he literally lost all four the yeah, he, Kilo, yes. the raichu the pidgeotto and the gloob yeah that was just awful that fight probably the worst actual fight that you get to be honest I be- if I if I remember correctly, it was Thunderbolt paralyzed, fully paralyzed, and the muck minimized. Yeah, I think that is was how it. that fight started, and that's just that's just asking for all of the trouble. All right, Matt going for two C Samuel here. I can definitely respect that. Much safer than going into this with one controller because if you just go in with the Starmie, you have to hydro pump the Nether King here. And this Nidoking King has Mega Horn. And if your Starmie doesn't have great defense, that's just gonna one-shot you. Uh, so going into this with two controllers and just going for Psychic Stomp here, which you can do at high special attack. Actually, it's the Psychic Range. Wow, really impressive. Uh, probably wasn't the best range. You know, you know what's funny about this fight with Hydro Pump? is that you can miss Hydro Pump, but yeah. Samuel can also miss Megahorn, and I don't think I've ever seen him miss Megahorn. I've definitely never seen that. If, if you've seen Samuel miss Megahorn, uh, just raise your hand in chat, because I've never seen it from anyone, ever. Uh, also, uh, good to note that we fight this we fight this black belt even though like we have to do this funky movement to like talk to him. Uh, we fight him instead of the other guy because the other trainer has a sand slash, which you would think, oh, that's just a one shot anyways. The sand slash has protect, uh, so we do opt to fight the graveler trainer instead of sand slash, uh, just to guarantee we save the turn. Looks like Matt's going into this fight with one controller. May still summon it after the fight um, has actually started. Which should be slightly slower than summoning before. Or we're just going to see one Siege of 3 here, which is pretty risky. Yeah, so this would be the first risky fight uh, out of probably four risky fights in the game if you do a one controller. Uh, the Dug Trio always outspeeds you uh, and will have the move Earthquake. So the one controller strat is to set up an X Defend turn one and you still have to go to plus two special. Uh, so yeah, we are going to see the one controller fight. Uh, Earthquake crit uh, usually doesn't kill from full, uh, but any other turn it okay. will do would crit. Uh, good to see Slash, because Slash will not kill, and does dodge the uh, potential crit on that last turn. So you're basically giving him two crit chances, uh, KOing crit chances. Uh, the other way to do this fight is to do a two controller. Uh, you skip the X defend because you just set up on your partner uh, and then Skull turn one. You do get hit with Earthquake, but Earthquake does, n not only does it never kill from full, but it's also only 75% damage when it's a spread move. But yeah. I think we should kill Rapidash to return the fight into a one controller fight. Uh, there is a 10% chance that Rapidash lives, as we saw during my tournament race uh, <laughs> back last weekend. Uh, so you do risk that. It does lose about 20 seconds if you do get a uh, unoptimal power of love drop. Yeah, uh, this one he fight saves... I don't actually know how much. It's not that much of the save strat that we've been seeing mostly for this fight. Uh, it doesn't save a whole lot of time. It obviously makes it completely safe. Yeah. Uh, it's not... And it's not... You, you save both uh, during the fight... Uh, but you also save a menu after the fight, because if you two-controller it, you do have to heal Rapidash in order to two-controller the following fight, which is, again, another rival fight. So I would say I would say it saves on the order of, just kind of going based on feel, um, like 8 to maybe 10 seconds. 
uh, to one controller versus the safe two controller. Because uh, that it, you lose more time in the menuing after than you do just in the fight during. Well, Drywall just about done with uh, Sifko. Also finished his catch route now at 50 out of 50. Uh, very much good to go for this late game portion of the run. But we are going to be seeing the Rival 5, I think it's Rival 5, fight here uh, on Matt's screen. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, it, this this fight kind of works out almost exactly like the others. Uh, even though we have Starmie instead of Eevee, um, you are just pumping X attacks into the main Pokemon with your partner uh, as you're just attacking because you want to dodge that sand attack so you can get rid of the Pidgeot immediately. Pidgeot has 127 speed, so unless your Starmie is literally minimum speed, you can be outsped on this fight, um, but it's usually not a problem in like 99% of runs. Uh, it does have quick yeah. attack, you have to make sure you stay above like 27 HP. Uh, which is possible, especially if you're one controllering Giovanni. Uh, the Earthquake can do quite a lot of damage, because uh, you do get hit usually three times. Um, but was not in that situation. The key here is, again, the Raichu might come out third or fourth in this fight. And because we don't have dynamic speed, you need to make sure you set up your X speed on turn two. So that way that speed uh, difference can take place by the time the Raichu is on the field. Yeah, so yeah, basically... It's, it's the only speed. little quirk of that fight. Yeah. Uh, if you're on 140 speed, you can skip the X speed. Uh, only the... 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 And after that, it doesn't really matter what the speed is. But maybe you get that one nice extra bit where you can save the X speed uh, on this rubber fight. So if you can outspeed the Raichu, there is the ever risky option to one controller that fight. Because you can just go plus two special attack and then KO the entire fight. There are two risks. Uh, one, you're risking a sand attack on your one setup turn on the Pidgeot. But two, you do have to hit the Hyper Pump then on the Raichu at plus two because Psychic won't kill. Uh, I've only successfully done it once. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've like always missed the Hydro Pump. Uh, I don't see Sand Attack that often, rudely enough. But. I mean, everyone's just like, it has sand attack, and it's like, that's enough to scare me. It's definitely pretty scary. Can make that fight very annoying. So ideally, you always want to outspeed the Pidgeot. Uh, so coming up very shortly, uh, we're going to be into Victory Road. And we will see one of the most difficult fights in the game, uh, if you do it risky, which is Naomi. Naomi has a Kangaskhan. Uh, in which you must hit a Hydro Pump on. Now, if you two controller the fight, uh, it's completely safe because even if you miss your Hydro Pump, you just set up back. You just set up again to plus four and can scald. Uh, the risk one controller is that uh, Naomi's Kangaskhan has uh, what is it? Is it Crunch? It has both Sucker Crunch Punch? and Sucker Punch. Yes. And Sucker Punch is just one of those scary things. It's a priority move, and if you're already below half health and you get Sucker Punched, you just die before you even have an attempt at a Hydro Pump. So most people, and I really mean most people, even Echi and Etiquette, uh, will two control this fight, even if Hydro Pump is not a range. Yeah, you really only want to go for it if you need that yeah. extra bit of time safe. I noticed that Drywall, I think, is on his last turn of setup and got scared because he was on three HP uh, <laughs> going into the Mr. Mime on that last hit. He was safe because yeah. uh, Sabrina does not have any priority moves on any of her Pokemon, so it would have been safe to not heal on that turn. Uh, Matt did hit the Hydro Pump. Love to see it. So 
Seems like Drywall wasn't able to take out the Alex Sam. Probably did did uh, Mr. Mime use another light screen? Um ooh, I wonder wonder if that was the case. Feet's a little bit choppy at the moment. Uh so yeah, I didn't that, was, quite that catch or it. that or he didn't X speed, maybe. Yeah, that could have also uh, been just it. got hit before. Um I mean, you can also. I think, I think that. he just didn't X speed. I think yeah. was the problem. That would make more sense. Um, which is usually fine. You you can get hit, but so that made that made that heal actually look good. It might have been a heal instead of an X speed. Maybe I just saw one thirty one special attack at twenty at forty seven. So this army truly is cracked. <laughs> yeah, that is actually really good. Uh, even Drywall can uh, scald the Weezing and Venomoth on. Yeah, no problem Koga, at all. Which is the, a, a big point there. Let just see what the special attack is going to be at 49. <laughs> uh, so the juggling fight's kind of interesting here because the Hypno can put you to sleep. Uh, it does get a chance to do that. We didn't see that, but weirdly enough, you like to double Thunderbolt it to reduce your chance of status lagging oh. it. And, uh, and Trump still got a paralysis, like a 10% paralysis proc on the Hypno. Yeah, I, I, I think I know what happened now. Uh, Drywall seems to have accidentally skipped the X speed when buying. Uh, because he just oh. went back into the Mart and bought 11 X speeds. So um, that's how that happened on uh, Sabrina's fight. Yeah, ends up being okay. Um, yeah. Because yeah, the only thing you're outsped by on is the Alakazam. And since you're waiting off light screen, it just makes sense to to use it when you do that. But yeah, small mistake, but recovered easily. Uh, meanwhile, King Trubs is going to be doing the Alexa skip uh, very shortly here. Uh, five trainers in Victory Road. One of them we can skip unmounted. So it is the skip we've known about for the longest time. The rest we will have to <laughs> Uh, not skip via Rapidash or Aerodactyl, hence the category no mount skips. Yeah. Uh, it's very tight. It's, uh, again, trainers basically have to see you right in the center of the chest in order to fight you. So it always looks like they should be able to see you, but trainers are have pretty laser vision and are pretty blind. So you do demount Rapidash here. Let's see if he gets it. That's and he it. does. Very, very nice. clean. That was very well executed. Uh, I did just see 139 special attack at 49 for <laughs> Drywall wow. Star. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, that that Star you is as cracked as it is jacked. <laughs> this time, this time you could probably um, bubble beam the gym. Doesn't even need to scroll. <laughs> Uh, and then same as the Hypno fight, the, the Jinx can put, put you to sleep, which happened turn one. Uh, you do have to hit a Hydro Pump on this one. Uh, Scald is just not good enough. Uh, a lot of people put, we're just checking the ranges for like Scald. It's like, yeah, you have to have 151 special attack for it to be a range. And everyone's like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, 143, by the way, special attack on Trub Starmie. At level really 51, good. So, so very, very high. Uh, no no range is necessary. Uh, that's high enough to go to plus four instead of plus six of Lorelei. That's such a nice time save. Yeah. And it's nice because he also hit the two hydro pumps that you need to hit and probably won't be going for any more. Uh, because even if you're just 141 for Jinx, that's a 15 and 16 uh, scald range, hmm. uh, which you would do over Hydro Pump, obviously. And now we have Caden on Drywall's side. Uh, perfect timing because Matt just has to push this boulder 20 times, so nothing yeah. going on there. <laughs> so you definitely want to see Protect on 1 out of Caden. Uh, can go for Toxic, Moonblast, or Minimize as well, and all of those are annoying uh, for their own reason. Minimize, of course, makes it harder to hit, and oh, Ooh, gets the minimize. Let's hope it. the psychic hits uh, here. Come on. Okay, protect. Uh, protect. That's fine. And gets got the it. hit. Okay, good. Okay. So. A little a little fist pump when you get that. I believe one minimize puts the accuracy just to sixty-seven percent. That's that's right. Uh, but yeah, minimize makes it harder to hit. Moonblast can drop your special attack, which means you have to always psychic the beetle. 
you can't go for scald otherwise. Um, and yeah, of course, toxic. You have to menu, you have to heal the poison. Uh, and it gives the mech an extra turn to go for minimize, which it can do. It can go for toxic into minimize instead of toxic into protect. I believe I had that in my run yesterday. All right, drywall looking at the... Uh... Not super confident in the gym puzzle. Hasn't hit any optionals here. I think he knows oh, what he's doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, just Almost not there. Super familiar with all, where all the walls are. I do love the Koga gym where like you get a little bit of the smoke that just it gives you that clue where the walls are. Um, yeah. Just that. Just every once in a while. Um, very very nice touch. I think it's neat. I I just think it's neat. <laughs> I, I I mean we we said this at the beginning in that like this game is really one of the most beautiful like Pokemon games in terms of like yeah. its art style. And I love how the gyms handle that as well. The Sabrina gym like reminds me of the OG Smash level of the Saffron City Smash where you're on the top of the buildings. Hmm. Yeah. I just think the art style of this game is so charming, so fitting for Pokemon. Well, I just picked up the full restore, which is going to be uh, relevant for the Agatha fight specifically on the Elite Four. A uh, couple of fights to do before then, but just now leaving uh, Victory Road at 2.56, so pretty good pace still. Meanwhile, Drywall is finishing up the Koga fight. Uh, didn't count the protect so far. Let's see where we go from here. Thunderbolt protect. Okay. You can also scout the gold bats. Um, I mean, a pretty normal fight, it looks like. Yeah. Just based off, just based off his HP, um, looks like he probably got a, a toxic turn one. Because it did that, just that little bit of chip damage. Um, but you just, you always have to heal off toxic. It's, okay. um... So, because otherwise you're just gonna get protected a lot of damage. Uh, the unfortunate yeah. thing for Drywall right now is I notice he only has three psychics remaining. Um, either, I'm I'm hoping he either a still has to use the elixir mm -hmm. or b realizes that that's not enough psychics to make it through the next sequence. Right. Um, yeah. Because you just you just don't have enough. I do believe um, the would have to center at some point. I do believe the beginner notes just go for the. Elixir after Koga's gym. So uh, we may see uh, Drywall use it after picking up Strong Push here. Uh, also, Matt deposited the Rapid Dash. So oh, I don't wow. know if that means that Matt is going for 1C strats all the way or um, or anything, but um, it's very interesting to see for sure. Because <laughs> usually, if you want to do 2C strats for Lamp and uh, Champ, you just keep the Rapid Dash in. Or you deposit it and withdraw the Dodrio and also do 2C Agatha with it. So I guess the idea is this. Say he does get crit on champ. I bet he should have more than enough of a lead to go right back into the Elite Four and yeah. still be able to win the race. So yeah, I don't that's... think that he's in danger of losing the race uh, and not advancing at all. Uh, just based on the lead he has. So the idea is, like, try to get as fast as possible, because a lot of our top runners, while the races might not be super close or competitive in these first-round races, there's still a lot to play for, and especially in terms of pot seeding. Yeah. Because um, you you look at what Etchy did on the very first run. Get a 259. Everyone in pot one currently is like, oh, I really hope I don't get Etchy round two. Absolutely, so the idea yeah. is how fast of a time do I need to stay in pot one, which would be a top six time. Um, yeah. And a lot of discussion behind that is, okay, how fast do I need to go to get that? And um, I had theorized around like a 305 flat. Uh, if Pretty you look much. at my time uh, from that second race, I got a 304.38. And a lot of runners are like, yeah, I'm kind of aiming for that. So, um... The way it's looking right now on, on the bracket, you really only have to beat my time with a 307.10 to get pot one for round two. Um, but very interesting for uh, for Matt here is that 
the slowest of the winners will actually get drawn into pot three for round one. Right. So which which Joker had is probably looking likely for that because his run gosh, was it yesterday two days ago yeah. that because he didn't synchronize he got a quiet star me uh, it had to do a lot of funky things at the end there so he ends up with a three fifteen yeah uh, which funny enough there are three losing times that are faster than that uh, Sai J and Quo both have three thirteens and Iron has a three fourteen. Uh, they're looking pretty solid right now um, to also just advance on time. There's going to be five uh, five advancements just on time. I like to call them the wild card slots. Um, so yeah, you're either going to be pot one or pot two most likely as long as you win your race uh, with that one exception. Um, yeah, but that does kind of mean that on the one hand, um, Matt will want to get a fast time, like not fall behind Joker's time here, but also, like, if Matt just dies to one C strats, then that's basically, that's it, right? It's gonna be part three guaranteed. Yeah, it'll be it's a risky game. interesting to play this out. What I also find interesting, and it just is, uh, it's kind of like a, it's just how the scheduling works out. Um, so Echi had the first, he was our, he's our number one overall seed, a record holder. And then got a record in this race. Uh, yeah. I think you can pretty much in permanent ink slot him in to, to pot one um, yeah. for the next round. Uh, so long as all seven, in fact, I think he's guaranteed, he's guaranteed um, after aspects finish. Um, yeah, he's going to be guaranteed. Uh, I'm next with that 304. Uh, I would need five of our final runners to outplace me to bump me down into pot two. But the weird thing is, is that our final four races of this tournament will feature our number two, number three, number four, and number five seeds. Yeah. So there are some very good runners that are going to be the last to go. Yeah, that's going to this last week of round one is going to be very, very tense. Very interesting to to see what's going to happen. I said he did just point out a defense drop here on uh, the Starmie. I don't think that with this HP, Starmie is in quick attack range, so... Should not be unless he has, like, absolutely minimum. Yeah, I, I think this should be, be fine. Yeah, this should be more than fine. I can have five notes up. I have those ranges. Do, 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 slides at the end. The quick attack. Quick attack with the lowest possible defense and minus one defense is 31 damage. Uh, 32 on a high roll. Yeah, uh, so, so he would be in quick attack crit range, but should never even attempt it. Um, because how the AI kind of works is it likes to pre-roll all of its attacks and then see like what does the most damage. Um, that's an overly simplified version of that. Um, but you can pre-roll a crit. Uh, and if you do that, it might favor going for that move. Now, it doesn't mean that the move itself will crit. It just pre-rolled it because it has to do the actual roll. So to get something like a quick attack even attempted, uh, it, the quick attack would need, have need to roll a pre-roll crit, and then it would have to actually crit. Yeah. So sorry, even the opportunity of seeing it and getting crit would basically be like seeing a crit twice in a row, which is I think like a one in four hundred chance. Uh, but yeah, right. that can be that can be a little nervous to see that on uh, on Agatha. Uh, to get that defense drop, but Agatha is not the most threatening of these last three fights. You yeah. basically need to dodge one crit. Uh, Lance Speaking. is the most threatening, and we just did see Trub save for this fight, so we know that he's not going to drop all the way back to the Elite Force yeah. Center. But, but this does make me nervous. Here, yeah, this is definitely going to make him nervous uh, because you do have multiple chances to get crit here because you have to set up to plus six special attack and plus two speed and you're going to lead with this X special defense. Uh, Hyper Beam is the move that you... It's a its a bit of a double-edged sword here. You actually want to see it because it has the recharge turn, but you don't want to see it because it does do the most damage and is the most threatening on a critical hit. Absolutely. There comes there, the Hyper Beam. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so that's thats the fight, basically, because it now has to recharge. Uh, and Mac can just now back. go on the attack, so... Once he lands, paid off. 
Um, yeah, and what's great is that uh, so some bad bad special attack armies uh, would have to risk a range on the Dragonite. Uh, it is guaranteed at 140 special attack. He's way above that. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, so no worries there. Also, weirdly enough, the Gyarados at very bad special attack is a plus six psychic range at yeah. 131. Uh, you can't just click Thunderbolt um, to not have to worry about that, but it is interesting that missing the Gyarados range is also a thing. Wow, yeah. 150 special attack. Really, really great special attack. And, and Drywall is probably going to have even higher special attack at that point. Uh, uh, looking ahead, 150 special attack is a 12 and 16 plus two Thunderbolt range ooh, I, on champion. I have a feeling Matt will not go for that, but uh, I mean, I don't know. So far, so risky. Um, yeah, exactly. What he does here for the last fight. I, that's usually the part where I like to go for it because the one, the one controller uh, champion fight. You typically need to heal because Air Slash just does enough damage to put you in quick attack range. So getting to a point where you can try to avoid that heal turn uh, can really pay off uh, in that situation. However, um, by the time you want to plus two Thunderbolt, you're usually in quick attack range anyway. So at that point you have to heal and now it's like not even worth um, trying to like save that turn because you still have to set up to plus four, you just do it on the vile plume instead. All right, looks like we are going to see one C champ here, uh, from Matt, and he is definitely still on pace to beat Joker's time here. Did you did you see if he saved? I'm sure he did. Did save? Yes, yes, yeah. he did. This is this will probably be a be a very comfortable like tap it in. Um, should be very comfortably in pot two for the next round. Yeah. Uh, on this time. Yeah, but the threat here is uh, air slash can do a lot of damage and it also can be a range to kill from full. Uh, looks like the HP stat is actually pretty decent uh, on Matt Star, so I'd be surprised if air slash crit kill from full. But it would kill from this HP, so we don't want to see... Okay, Ooh, miss, that's great. Great dodge. That puts him in a position where he could plus two Thunderbolt if he really wanted to here. Doesn't go for it. Doesn't go for it, though. So this is the last turn where he... Okay. But he well, does have to heal here. Because, because he's in that is quick definitely range. quick attack range. Uh, yeah. Quick attack on, on the normal will do like 27 damage. Uh, can do as much as 30 okay. in some cases. But this should be it now. He should be safe. So, uh... Once he paid off, let's see where that puts him in terms of time. Um, looks like this should be about like a 310. Yeah. <laughs> I, I laughed. The, the Rivals Vile Plume came out the exact same time it had a little <laughs> mirror match. <laughs> the animation and everything was, uh, was pretty good. That Vile Plume on uh, screen just saw its future. Oh, I should note that the uh, the timer on our screen is about a minute behind, uh, so this might be yeah, a three eleven, yeah, uh, more likely. But yeah, once once you got the uh, once you got the Pidgeot off the screen, it is just it's it's full GGs uh, for the Eevee version, of course. Uh, I know on uh, the Pika side, you still have the Jolteon to worry about, especially if you're doing the plus four Hydro Pump strats. Oh, interesting that's a... that Drywall uh, does not have a Rattata. Oh. Really so always... is, is this a random Rattata just running around? <laughs> but Listen, yeah, that's... not having a Repel up is better than <laughs> skipping, uh, than say, skipping uh, Synchronize. Like, true, you true. technically can just make it work. Um, you can, you can. <laughs> if you just dodge everything, no problem. But yeah, I that's... Uh... Gonna, I think he's going to see probably, like, an onyx or a rhyhorn and be like maybe i should repel <laughs> maybe i feel like it is just much better in victory row because it's very narrow in there uh, there's a lot of very wide pokemon <laughs> spawning uh, but that is gg for matt just gonna click through the last couple of dialogue boxes here get registered into the hall of fame and since 
Um, there's only the Starmie in the in the party right now, unlike with the safety strats, where there's also a second Pokemon. Uh, there, there we go. There's the Repel. Yeah, two, two <laughs> Nidorinos, and it's like, oh yeah, this thing. Good idea to put that up, and uh, looks like it is actually going to be a three ten time here, because I don't think it was quite a minute of delay. But I guess uh, we'll I see. just looked at the uh, official race time. GG Matt finished in a three eleven oh one. Ah, so close. So right at that three eleven mark. Well, GG. We're gonna. Uh, and then uh, we'll just we'll wait to see yeah. um, how he wants if he wants to come in and talk to us. Uh, but we do have Drywall also just starting the Victory Road sequence. So all the same goodies of Naomi and getting put to sleep. And, of course, the all-important Alexa skip. We've actually seen a decent amount of success from even even young and new players of this game being able to do Alexa skip successfully. Uh, yeah. Again, it's not the most difficult of the skips. I think the Vermilion skip is, uh, on average... Uh, a lot uh, a lot more difficult to do, especially since and, you have to do it twice. Yeah, uh, and goes I will... one controller. We'll see if he summons Oof. in battle, though. Okay. Um, that's not uncommon to see, like, people come into the these fights, one controller, and, be, and then see the notes that say two controller, and you're like, oh, yeah, summon second controller. So, yeah, not surprised about that. <laughs> and what will likely be our first Hydro Pump click the day here let's see come on hit 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 perfect yeah fantastic definitely did not have a range on that hydro pump that was more than guaranteed with the uh, special attack on that star and uh looks like we're joined by king traps now hello 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 first of all congratulations matt on your excellent run and it, all the it could have been better. I, the end. It could have been better. I definitely zoned out and hit that uh, that juggler trainer in Silco. One hundred percent. Just that was on me. I just zoned out and completely missed the teleport pad and thought I was on the next floor that I needed to be on there. So, yeah, yeah, it was kind of odd. It was just like, oh, you just kind of like went straight to the right. But I actually wanted to ask you about uh, your catch route. Um, yes. because I, I, I heard noticed... you, I heard you commenting about it a lot. Yes. So this, this is absolutely what I want to ask you about. So you did not evolve any of your four level evolution Pokemon, your Machop, your Cubone or your Krabby. I almost thought it was a mistake at first, but you just outright, uh, went to not do that. So what was your thought process? Uh, when Correct. It it's actually to... something I've been it's actually something I've been practicing for uh, for quite a few of my runs lately. And, uh, you know, between the between the three of them, if you get all three of them, you know, it's four levels, as we all know, it's two a uh, uh, move for each one of them, two moves for Cubone, uh, in Cubone's case when it evolves. Comes out to about uh, what was it about two two between two and two and a half minutes of time loss just from leveling up and evolving those. So I've just been practicing. If I get certain, ca if I have a certain catch count by the time I hit Victory Road, I know I can drop them off. If I don't have that number, then I start adding them back on to the, uh, adding those evolutions back on, starting with Machoke and Kingler. Nice. Yeah, that's so interesting because it was also something I thought about probably like a year ago. I kept thinking that like Krabby was kind of bad because it was like ah, it's just like four levels. And a move, so you lose like 10 seconds, at least in overhead. And it's like, mm -hmm. is this something I can like skip catching altogether? Uh, and then kind of over time for myself, I it just like never worked out for me because I like to uh, like just the bonuses were more valuable. Um, and like I could have like a really efficient deposit menu where like at one point, like e it's Eevee and Krabby. And I'm like, this is perfect. I'm never risking like a one controller or anything or not having to delay a deposit menu uh, after a next catch. So so for me, I just I just like to keep them and, and really go for it. I did think you got a little lucky with the with getting both Psyduck and Ghastly because I felt that if you were missing one of those two, then the whole depositing might have uh, not worked out in your favor. 
Yeah, I uh, my my backup plan if I didn't happen to get either Psyduck or Ghastly or skip Doduo, for, you know, one of those three basically. My backup plan in that case is to evolve the Nine Tail or evolve Volpix into Nine Tails, and then try to catch uh, Magmar. That's the one I have the best success with for the uh, those kind of late late game bonus catches there. <laughs> right, and it was like, oh yeah, you just need one more catch, and then it was like Victory Bell. <laughs> Because if oh, of course, I had to throw Victory, victory Bell. bell. <laughs> if anyone's we all know my love bell, of Victory Bell. <laughs> uh, quickly, I just want to uh, just point everybody's attention to drywall screen as we are about to see Alexa skip. Why not? Oh, just didn't even attempt it. <laughs> okay, wow. Well. Right into the fight. So this fight is kind of interesting. It's just, uh, especially with a good star, it's not a problem. You just like special attack turn one and then psychic three times. Uh, the only thing that you have to remember is that you don't have enough psychics to make it to your elixir point. Uh, so you will have to center heal uh, or go back and take the free heal at Jenny. Uh, or you just take the Randall strat and you hydro pump three times on Agatha. But it is to. Uh, uh, actually, it would only be two times. You could still scald the, uh, the Onyx safely to save the psychic that way. I was going to say, I've been very impressed with Drywall's run. I've kind of been watching it off in the, the corner there. And when I was when I, we were scheduling originally our race time between him, me, and Bouncy, I, he, he came in my chat and we actually got to talk about it. I think he said this is only his second or third time actually running this game. And the fact that he's this far on his second or third run is extremely impressive. Yeah, we were commenting that this is not a bad time in any stretch of the imagination for any pot three runner. Uh, this is very respectable uh, overall. Uh, a couple optionals. Uh, I've got four optionals with uh, Alexa being the fourth right now. So obviously, you know, a little bit to clean up uh, there. Uh, a little bit of hesitancy on some of these, like for example, um, Erica's gym. It's like, if you don't know the puzzle, it's like, well, I'm actually a little lost because it, it is a bit of a maze if you if you don't know, uh, but has been very solid with uh, with knowing when to two controller fights uh, and being able to summon that second controller. It was just a little halter skelter on Route 21, uh, dodging a few of the uh, water trainers, but thankfully it, it worked out just fine. Uh, we'll be seeing our the second attempt of Hydro Pump here in just a moment. Oh, and it's, it's a miss. Ooh, he's down to 9 HP. He's going to want to heal here. Oh, it just goes for it. Uh, he should still want to heal. I believe the Golbat does have Quick Attack. Either the Golbat has Quick Attack or Arcanine has Extreme Speed, if I remember correctly. Okay, it did what? not go for Quick Attack, so he's through there. Yeah, this is a very nervous situation. Because usually you don't know what you're... Uh, what your moves are. Yeah, there's no E speed in this game, which is actually kind of a weird thing. All right, no priority moves. So it worked out just fine to risk that but, last Hydro Bomb. We definitely have to heal for uh, Dawson now. No two ways By the way, that. My, I, I just checked my stats on my Starmie. That Starmie had 30 IV special attack, 31 <laughs> IV defense. Oh, wow. So we so with that being said, I think Drywall has uh, 31 IV special attack. It's a 1042 CP star you, and it I think we have max special attack. Yeah, it was nice. ridiculously high. high. This gonna be pushing the boulder here exactly 20 times. So okay, so Matt, you did all the risky strats. So you did one controller for Giovanni, Agatha, Lance, and for Champ. Uh, did you go in thinking, I'm just going to risk it for the biscuit, try to get as best of a time as possible? Uh, just what was your thought process going into that? Is it is it like partially a seeding thing, or were you pretty much just set from the beginning to do that? I, I was set from the beginning to do that. It's it's a comfort thing for me. It's what I know best. It's, you know, it, it, for me, less hand movement, which I don't know if you guys saw how many inputs that I had dropped in, uh, I believe it was my oh. Jesse James 4 fight, yeah. where yeah. I, think it won I think I lost a minute alone on that fight there. Um, you, sad, you the sad the thing is... at least three times. At, at least three. I think I hit it like four or five, if I remember right. Um, like, if I didn't have that many issues with my, my second controller just, you know, getting a good grip on it, um, that actually would have been a PB run for me 
obviously outside of those two optionals that I hit there. But um, so yeah, it was at that point it was more of a comfort. I know that I know those fights. I know what I need to look out for on them and everything. I know my ranges. So I went full, fully in expecting to do those one C for those uh, those four four fights there. I'm so glad that you used the word comfort because that is something we've mentioned uh, when it comes to especially like move order because some people have. <laughs> As you see on drywall screen, Hydro Pump in slot 2 and Thunderbolt 4, but yours is backwards. And the same for the EV side is sometimes your Sizzle side and Buzzy Buzz is backwards. It saves maybe two or three inputs through the run, but when you're comfortable with your order, you're comfortable with that. So with that being said, you are I think you're the only one that I see puts the map icon in the top left. Is that a big comfort thing for you to just switch even your 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 whole bag order around it's it it's weird because so the first time that i ever did a let's go speed run of any kind i did an aop run before i even attempted an any percent run and i must have had like the oldest notes ever for aop and it actually said to put the bag or put the bag in that order town map first pokemon second candies third and it's one of those things where when I first started picking up the run, like that just turned into a comfort thing, having the, the map on the top spot, Pokemon in the second, and then third spot is, is candy. And I, I feel like I maneuver it fairly well. It's not for everybody, but again, it's, it's a comfort thing for me at this point. Yeah. Uh, it just goes to uh, show how valuable those repels are, by the way. Drywall just got absolutely obliterated. Yeah. It was like, oh, I'm in the second to last room. I could drop the repel now got four extra encounters because That's the so Zubats painful. and the Rhyhorns and the Golbats just were were vicious. Uh, so yeah, that I really think that's a great example of why the repels are so so valuable. Yeah, you definitely don't want to drop those. Um, to what Matt was saying, uh, I, I just wanted to add, I, I think for the tournament, uh, comfort and consistency are just going to be key for uh, many of the runners because sure you can go for those top times uh, but if you take risks and they don't pay off uh, it may be better to go for what you're what you're most comfortable with right um, mm -hmm. same goes for the catch route as well so uh, not just yeah. for the fights and it's actually it's it's actually funny that you kind of mentioned like the there's some of the riskier strats are like the Samuel fight I went into that with 2C I was yeah. fully expecting you to do st uh, Psychic Stomp. I was not, I, I was amazed. I actually one shot with Psychic on, uh, yeah. on the Nido King there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the same thing with Naomi. I went in, you know, going in, because I knew I had the range on it, like guaranteed that I had the range on the, the uh, Kangaskhan there. But I wanted to make sure that if I missed that Hydro Pump, that I, I wasn't going to be going all the way back to Cerulean and having to restart Victory Road there. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think anybody has one seed Naomi this whole tournament up to this point. I debated it. I debated it, but I did not. <laughs> so you said. So you said your Starmie is max defense, right? Uh, it's uh, labeled best as defense. Yes. Yeah. So like that is the exact star that probably can one seed Naomi because you got a guaranteed range on Hydro Pump, and the Crunch plus Sucker Punch might not even kill you from pull mm -hmm. on those two shots so it's like you get it's like you at least get a chance uh, but you need to know you have like crazy defense because once once we figured out that it had sucker punch it's like there are so many runs that could just die to naomi and you never oh, even yeah. get a chance to hit hydro pump i don't think it's favored for some reason we don't see it a whole lot it's, it's not as rare as say like faint on on bruno but it's just like it's, it's happened enough that it scares a lot of people even with like good stars Oh, definitely, and, and that's why I like I was so comfortable with going in one C in Ag into Agatha there, for example. Like, I, I, I when the defense drop after the first crunch, I did get a little nervous there that uh, I was yeah. in quick attack range. But you know, looking at the calcs, like I would have lived outside of outside of a crit. I would have lived yep. any quick yeah. attack from Golbat at that yeah. point. Yep. So we, we were referencing that as well. And it's just, it goes to show how much of a difference the defense stack can make on Sarmi because I had the defense drop happen to mine as well on, on my uh, tournament race. And uh, the second crunch, uh, the crunch after that actually dropped me to 8 HP without critting. So that's 
a huge difference in HP. Hey, hey Matt, what was your special attack that you finished with on Starmie? Uh, let me get out of the judge menu here. <laughs> I know the answer, I just want you to say it. Oh, it was 150. <laughs> yeah. So, Drywall Starmie currently has 149 at level 52. Yeah, he's he's got to be he's got to be max IV for a special attack, which, like I said, he he's do he's been doing a great job in this one. Yeah, the Starmie is definitely wow. Talk, talk about two insanely <laughs> cracked uh, Starmies, especially on the special attack side. Uh, it's, it's funny we kind of think that Drywall uh, Starmie is better than yours. And it's funny because his CP was 1042 and yours was 1101. So it shows that CP is a little bit of a made up stat sometimes. Yeah. I mean, this Starmie oh. may well be the best Starmie we've seen all tournaments. I'm not sure if anyone has gotten a better Starmie yet in terms of speed and, and, X, uh, and special attack at least. Yeah, let's just hope that the uh, <laughs> it's the attack stat that is uh, not so good, as it's called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the speed stat was the one thing my Starmie was was lacking there, which, I mean, outside of that, that first Blaine fight there, it doesn't really matter unless I was trying to go for 1C strats on Rival 5, which I knew I wouldn't get low uh, a high enough speed before then to even attempt, to, to think about attempting 1C Rival 5. Yeah, 115 on the speed for Blaine is just like, I lose a half a turn, but oh well. Alright, Drywall is through Bruno. And at full health, because he did opt to heal before Bruno. Wasn't at risk or anything. Uh, but with with a, with a second Pokemon in your party, the Onyx can quite often go for Stealth Rock. Uh, so he won't even have to heal going into Agatha. He may opt to save or not. Yeah, which he does. Uh, again, don't hate the play. Uh, toughest three fights in the game here. Um, this is a... So Agatha is the start of that series where you can start two controllering the fights for safety. The idea is if you two controller Agatha, uh, you want to have either a bird or a fish. A, a flying <laughs> type or a water type is your partner, so that way the Gengar does not come out second, because you want to set up X special attack turn one and X speed turn two, so you don't want to be outsped by the Gengars. Uh, they do have Shadow Ball, it does do an absolute massive amount of damage. Uh, but just opting for the one controller fight here, I do think it saves quite a bit of time to not two controller the fight. Uh, because if you do two controller, you do have extra inputs the whole time. You can mitigate some of the... Okay, the... So obviously the Starmie has very bad defense. <laughs> because that did a ton of damage on a not crit. So a crit will kill from full here. Uh, which is quite risky. Uh, but does dodge both of them. Wow, that is an amazing amount around. of damage difference. That was like a max min between those two rolls. Yeah. He, he got very lucky without the uh, the minus uh, the, the defense drop there too. It looks like because that first hit, he was definitely in the uh, death to quick attack range at minus one if he had gotten that defense drop on yeah. turn. Yeah, two I mean, could have still could have still just healed on the goal pass, uh, but yeah, that's that is probably where the difference lies uh, in terms of yeah. CP, right? So this army is just mm -hmm. much squishier than uh, what you had, Matt. So. Yeah, when you two control this fight, you can actually go to plus four and then stall with the other Pokemon, which does save you six seconds to not get those turnarounds. You can also uh, heal and elixir uh, in the fight, which saves you a menu into uh, the last fight. Uh, so even two controlling, it does lose you time in the battle mid battle, um, but you are just kind of kind of limiting your time loss in other ways, which makes it pretty viable. But I think you're only really risking like one crit turn unless you have minimum defense as we kind of anticipate that we see here the hp isn't all that high either 153 special attack and it's still it was still a level oh wait this is uh that no, was 53 because oh, yeah. Yeah. uh he did hit probably will get Lexa. one more level before the end of the game so yeah that's yeah that is crazy at 153 uh, the plus two Thunderbolt range on Pidgeot is now 14 and 16. That's a really good range for it is. plus the Thunderbolt. You never get oh, those. 
I just noticed on that save screen that Drywall does have 51 Pokemon uh. registered. Uh, and and skip the Porygon anyways. May have may have like out of habit just got it. Uh, but I did notice 51. Hey, better be one above than one below. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't be here if yeah. he was one below. So we didn't uh, we didn't see it on uh, on Matt's side. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll see it on this side. Uh, uh, there we go. Okay, we get it on this side. Good, uh, because without to two controller this fight, it's actually faster to go into the fight with one controller and then summon mid battle to get a turn or two out of the way. In this situation, it's actually the most optimal to you set up your X speed. Uh, you set up your X speed turn one. And if you get Hyper Beam, uh, on the recharge turn, you can do your X special attack and then attack and KO the uh, Seedra before summoning that second controller. You need to get your X speed off because the Aerodactyl is obviously very fast. And then from there, you can uh, just finish up your X special attack setup mid-battle. A uh, bit of an inaccuracy here. You don't need to scald the Aerodactyl. It is guaranteed at plus four unless you are the absolute minimum special attack and that's zero iv zero avs it's 15 huh. and 16 with psychic there so it is very safe to keep psychic in. uh the gyarados would be a bigger problem if you were in that situation because again plus six uh should be fine again just seize thunderbolt and uh i think he's just not worrying about it yeah, and that's, that's something from, from personal experience. That comes from more or less just knowing the run a little bit better and, and practicing and, and knowing, getting to know the ranges a little bit more as well. Yeah, here finally realizes that Psychic is uh, completely fine. Uh, better to heal on this turn. Um, it, doesn't ma it doesn't matter in this case uh, because the uh, since the Dragonite is not a range, um, you don't need that extra stop damage, but it really helps for bad Snarmies that where Dragonite's a range uh, in this two controller fight. You do finish up uh, healing back to full with full setup. Uh, so if you miss the range, the Rapid Ash can tap it in with stop without you being KO'd. And it is honestly very likely that the Rapid Ash is just faster than Dragonite, anyways. Um, so that is that is like the best way to clear up the Lance fight completely safely. Because with that one controller fight being as risky as it is with the uh, Hyper Beam crit potential, to be able to completely, completely remove all of that risk is great for this race setting. Uh, it is the fight that loses the most time to safe strats. Uh, it loses about 25 seconds. Uh, and then here we'll have another iteration of how to play safely for the champion fight. It is a completely two controller fight, uh, and it is not even all that much slower than just doing the one controller fight, as we saw from Matt's side. If you one controller, you typically have to heal anyways, um, so you're losing usually you're usually losing two turns to an X special defense and an uh, hyper potion compared to just uh, compared to just a two controller fight. Uh, what you want to do here is you want to still have your partner Pokemon be KO'd, which reverts the rest of the fight back to one control, uh, which is the fastest way to do it. If you put a Butterfree or a Beedrill in your party, you're guaranteed to get quick attack uh, on that side. There's also a version where if you have a Meowth, you can fake out turn one with it, and it will still die to quick attack turn two, which is even safer. Uh, if you do what I do, you just leave Rapid Ash in the party, and it's 50%. If the Pidgeot goes for the Rapidash and does enough damage, then it wants to quick attack, and you still have to not get Power of Love, as we saw in my first tournament race as well. Um, it does lose 20 seconds if your partner Pokemon lives, um, but it does cost about like 8 10 seconds to retrieve a Butterfree or so. So it kind of, you kind of like split it halfway there. Uh, you still have to finish up your setup on this turn. Again, I'm a little bit worried for the Starmie because it, its uh, HP is quite low, so Air Slash Crit could have killed, just depending on what the uh, special attack stat is. Uh, but Drywall gets through it just fine. Uh, ends up plus four Thunderbolting. Uh, and as long as he clicks all the correct moves, this will be GG 
for drywall with a very respectable time. Probably end up at, if I'm guessing, like a 37 or so. Yeah, with a stamina like this, these couple of Pokemon are just, like you said, hitting the correct moves. You can psychic everything except for the uh, Slowbro. You do have to come to both that. I just always want to point out that if you have a terrible Starmie, the Marowak Psychic at plus four can actually be arranged. So, that, uh, what? Yeah. What? What? T today I learned. <laughs> I found this, that out the hard way. This could be a range? Yes, I have missed that range before. So, uh, really painful. I, I, I hate that. I, I hate that I know that now. This Sorry, made, that I, makes this fight so much it? scarier all the times I've gone in with low HP against Marowak. Yeah. All right, your move, other competitors. 156 special attack on this Starmie. The Marowak at minimum special attack apparently is a range at plus four psychic. Yeah, that's the latest you can possibly lose a run. Drywall luckily oh had a much better Starry, basically <laughs> the exact opposite. It's, so it still probably heard you and scalded anyways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's very so respectable nice. time, especially for somebody who has only done the run two or three times to this point. To get into the 130s is already a great launching pad. And a lot of these runners, while they are gonna go into the lower bracket of round two. Um, you're going to see some massive improvements, especially from the kind of low-end runners. They could have massive PBs because now they've done the run. Now they know like what optionals to avoid. Uh, and just a bit more comfort is going to just translate into so much extra time. So we're excited to see uh, what these guys can do in round two because it was such a point of contention to, uh, to get a double elimination style tournament going. But yeah, GG's to our runner. King Trubs is your winner today with a time of 3.11.01. Drywall officially finishes with a 3.37.42. Yeah, GG. So now we have eight of our 13 first round matches done. Uh, obviously, nobody has topped Echi yet with his 2.59.40. Pikachu world record time in the very first run of this race. He is uh, now guaranteed to be in pot one of the next round, but everything else is still up for grabs. Drywall, yeah. first of all, congratulations, GG to you. How'd you feel about your run today? Well, I mean, it was really bad, but it was also a 14 minute PB since I'm yeah. just learning. So that's what we like to see. GG. Yeah, GG's to you. 14 minute PB is incredible. And I was just commenting about how a lot of our pot three runners, um, maybe a bit on the inexperienced side, but that's the experience is just going to translate very, very quickly to much faster time. So you obviously get another shot in round two. So do you think you can take what you've learned from this run and maybe get another 14 minute PB for round Perhaps. two? Perhaps. That would be good, I think. Hopefully. How'd you feel At least about, a 10-minute like, PB. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you feel about your catch route and everything? We were kind of looking at your tracker, and you had a pretty normal catch route. You did end up with one extra Pokemon. <laughs> um, I, I have no idea which extra Pokemon I got, to be honest. I went to check, make sure I had 50 after Lapras, and I have 51, and I'm like, okay, whatever. You have 51 <laughs> after Lapras, so so you did. you already didn't even need the Porygon. Yeah, I didn't need the Lapras either. <laughs> I did note I that didn't know. Uh, that your C skim was already 44 caught, and it was like, oh, this is very high. And it was to the point where I was like, oh, it's so high, you actually have an extra one already. Um, oh. But yeah, I mean, you you just figure out where that is, and boom, that's another 30 seconds in the bank, easily. Yeah, I marked Onyx. I did see an Onyx in Rock Cave, whatever it's, I forgot. Rock tunnel? Yeah, rock tunnel? Yeah, I saw it and I just went yellowed it and got it, so that might be the extra one. Uh, yeah, you definitely caught that, uh, but I didn't check whether you marked it or not. That's it, it, it is on your marker. Yeah, it is marked. I have no idea yeah. what the extra one is, but oh well.
Uh, probably hard to tell without going through the VOD again. <laughs> yeah, Magikarp. Fair. You're missing Magikarp. Ah, the Magikarp, yes, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. There it is. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I always forget yeah, to Magikarp. See, we were already well. able to help you to, to notice which one it was. Thank you. I wouldn't have found that out myself. I'm not very good at locating them on the tracker yet. But yeah, how did how did your run go? Uh, how would you prefer me to call you Trubs? Uh, Trubs is fine, or, or Matt. Um, no, my my run, I thought you know, outside of hitting a couple of optionals and the worst Mount Moon I've had in a long time, experience points wise. Oh, man, that uh, no Clefairy spawn. I had to grab the uh, rare candy and Cerulean instead of doing the early uh, Nugget Bridge there, which. Again, that comes down to comfort versus probably speed there. So, yeah, let's go. I'm that was a really good time. I thought at least it's very good for a race. So, GGs to you. Yeah, GGs to you as well. I was watching uh, watching here and there throughout the run. Uh, I even commented to to T Pat and Treveria here that you know it's. The, the fact that you just picked up the run here, you know, and that you've only ran it maybe two or three times, I think you told me when we were kind of discussing scheduling, the, the yeah. fact that you managed to get sub sub 345 is very impressive for, you know, a, 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 a beginner runner. Yeah, I, I'm very impressed. I, I thought I was going to get like a 345 or something. I did not expect to save that much time on my last so PB. Do you think that you might practice? Do this just for me. Just practice your route 21 water because you were just like left, right, left, right, ah, left, right, left, right, ah, because yeah. you yeah, it's so close it's, to a couple of them there. Yeah, it's very obvious that I haven't really practiced the routing much. I've just been following the route. I need, I need to know the locations of them. I know I messed up a little in Erica's gym as well. It was, if I don't have a map for it, maybe I need to make a map for it is yeah, the problem. I, I was going to say, if, if I were to offer some advice just go through erica's gym like one more time but you get that down pretty quickly but yeah route 21 uh can be very dangerous because you're on the water and you can't summon your second controller to back it to bail you out and you're still like don't have your starmie yet so you don't really have like any really powerful pokemon to deal with those trainers trust me i've i've hit one of them before it just feels so bad it's just like how do i run away from these trainers so yeah is that route the cycling road route uh, no, the water cycling route. 17 that too oh, okay see the easy part is you know where the uh the evolution trainers are you just go right down the middle oh, okay it is yeah, very I easy know. to go right down the middle and they can't see you <laughs> yeah i was definitely yeah, route 21's the water route stepping very lightly in cycling road as well <laughs> it, it honestly paid off because of those four optionals you hit it wasn't one of them because yeah, I've one of I've had... them equals the other four you hit. Let's go. I did hit a lot of options. I need to work on that. I'm not very good at the ones where you have to weave in between two trainers. <laughs> I mean, you did manage to hit the hardest skip in the in the run, uh, the one on Route Six going into the Million City. So I did uh... not know that was hard. Let's thanks, go. thanks for that. Thanks for that, Javari. Listen, <laughs> if you can if you can hit that, you can do all the other ones. Let's go. Good to know. Well, yeah. Uh, congratulations uh, again to our runners uh, for a great race uh, and great times from both of them, including a 14-minute PB from Drywall. Uh, this is a big weekend. This We just had two races today, and we got two more races tomorrow. We're starting to get into the meat of our competition uh, here. We got still, what is it, five races to go. For tomorrow, a doubleheader. Race one is at noon Eastern. It's Head Bob, Pengi, and Polka Guy. That one you definitely want to mark your calendars for. It'll be yeah. on this channel, PSR TV 2. So do make sure to hit follow on this channel, uh, not just PSR TV 1, uh, because that will start on over here again at noon. And then our next race, uh, I do have it on the official schedule. It got delayed by an hour, but Etiquette, Leggy Starscream, and paging side, that's actually going to be at 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. Uh, Etiquette, one of our top seeds in the tournament. Uh, and it's going to start a stretch where the final four races 
will feature our two, three, four, and five seeds in the Let's Go tournament. Uh, and then on Monday, we have New Amber. That's the number two overall seed. We'll take on Sandy Beach and King Par. Don't sleep on that match. Sandy Beach just got a sub 310 PB. So these are still going to be all very good races. So do make sure uh, to watch PSR TV. And again, yeah. we're back on this channel tomorrow at noon. I know you all want to see how good Poker Guy is. No one knows. No one knows how good Poker Guy is going to be, but it's a Canto game and you can't count him out. That is for sure. Uh, any, uh, anything that uh, anybody wants to say about the upcoming matches that we have here? I mean, these matches are all going to be very, very fun to watch. I think uh, each and every one of those um, has interesting runners in them uh, with Poker Guy, you know, with our uh, top five seats with Etiquette and New Amber on the other two runs. So um, there's a lot of good races coming up. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for all three of these. All three of these races. I think they're all going to be fantastic. Great. This whole tournament's been fantastic so far. Let's let's be honest. And you know, I think these next three races are all going to be you know some of the best races that we're going to watch during this entire tournament here. Yeah, and then after this, I just get, since I pulled up the schedule, uh, the last two races beyond this, uh, Wave Warriors matchup was with Kid Rocker and Zimlik. Uh, that's going to be on June 23rd, which is a Friday. Uh, and then the final race is going to be Dynam, Chrysosaurus, and Vermilion Runs. That'll be on Saturday, a week from today. So those will be uh, these three, plus those two I mentioned, will be our final five races of round one. And then we get the very, uh, very sought after draws for round two. So yeah, moving right along. Uh, thanks again to uh, to our runners. Uh, to Triv uh, and commentary with me, and of course to everybody that was watching uh, for an awesome race today. More racing content tomorrow with our doubleheader. We hope to see you there. Uh, any final words? Because that'll be that'll be it for me. Yeah, shout outs for our commentating crew today, T uh, Triv and, and T. Uh, you know, you guys were fantastic. Like I said, I was kind of listening the whole run there. And then also shout out to the tech team for, uh, uh, I know we had some audio issues throughout the run there. So shout outs to, uh, to Amoeba and our tech team there, uh, for, uh, for helping us get through, uh, get through those tech issues throughout the run there. Yeah. Big thanks to the people running this tournament and everybody participating. Very cool. Yeah, not much for me to add. Uh, I had a fun time on comps today. It was a very fun race to watch and commentate. So uh, I'm glad that I was able to do it. So, uh, yeah. I think right. that's going to be Thanks, everybody. Uh, yeah, thanks for saying behind the scenes. Amiibo, we love you. He's, a, he's in call with us. Um, yeah, that'll do it for us. Thanks again. Have a great day, everybody. We'll all see you tomorrow.